Recreational Outrage. We can just, you know, shout out dog. dead dogs. Shout out to <laughs> well, I hear they all go to heaven. Yeah, so. <laughs> Except there's one that doesn't, well, I know. Yeah. It's uh, Cerberus. Yeah, so we're like Guards. The, hounds of, the hounds of hell. Yeah, they, yeah, maybe they can go to heaven, yeah, but. Just, this is like their day job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sleeping in the suburbs. Yeah. But you work downtown. Yeah. Dude, my daughter, I don't know what it is, but my daughter, whenever I ask her where something is, she'll just go, it's downtown. And I'm like, You've never even been downtown. Like, why, do you, why do you say this? That's like, <laughs> that's like the equivalent of uh, the other day in time. Yeah. Downtown in space. You know, it's just like not here. Yeah. Not now. Yeah, yeah dude. I'll be like, we got to find you. Where's your socks? Like, yeah, they're downtown. Like, Come on. <laughs> that's actually a pretty funny bit. Yeah. She loves it. She laughs every time. How old is she? Five. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that as a response to anything. Yeah. Um, we used to, at summer camp, when people would ask us questions, we'd answer with answers that had no sense. Yeah. That didn't make any uh, any any way it made sense. Like, uh, kids would be like, hey, can I go to the bathroom? And you'd be like, look, dude, money doesn't grow on trees. Wow. Yeah. And then just... And how so old confused. were you when you were saying that? Probably 16, 17. Sure. You were like responsible for these kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Causing but, confusion. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Bathroom doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> it was, it was weird now that I think about it. Yeah. That these kids, it was their like experience camp and I was just pranking them. You're just, it, it reminds me, do you know that old, uh, one of Steve Martin's old bits? That's one of my favorites where he's like, the premise is he's like, you can, you could, if you have kids, you can teach them anything yeah. pretty much. Like you could tell them that words mean different things and they're showing up to the first day of school. Like, uh, may I mambo dog face to the banana patch? <laughs> <laughs> All bathroom related, you yeah. know, yeah. bathroom humor is king. Where's the bathroom downtown, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Downtown. <laughs> downtown in the poop. You gotta deck. pay a toll fee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I dude, It bothers me. The bathrooms downtown always needing a code. Because I hate being, I, once I ask, I feel like they know what I'm about to go do. Well. Because if I need to pee, I can just pee in an alley. Yeah. That's, just, I would discourage that. <sighs> no, dude. It's summer. It's springtime. The pee spot is back in the backyard. It's, do you, I, I feel like it maybe, do you, is there a lot of peeing in alleys? Because you're in New York, right? I do live in New York. You know, I feel like I've lived in New York for Almost 16 years now. And I grew up in New Jersey. Okay. Uh, so I like, I was Sounds no, like a pee alley no stranger. Kinda. Yeah. I mean, New, New Jersey is like the main pee alley for <laughs> New York. But <laughs> I mean, th this is all to say like, I, I, I don't see as many alleys in New York City okay. as, as like the same way. Maybe this is a fun analogy. <laughs> like as a comedian, you, you, you two are comedians. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> You ever have somebody ask you, oh, you're a comedian? Like, how do you deal with hecklers? Yeah. And I feel like the answer is, part of my answer to that question is almost always like, well, there's not, it's not as common an occurrence. Like, if you have, you know, you 10 shows in a week, like, I'd say the majority of them will not have a heckler. You know, yeah. I don't know why I had to pick a number. If you've had <laughs> 100 shows, the majority is going to have a heckler, but... Uh, and so I feel like alleys in New York are like hecklers in comedy, like more like, you know, uh, sensationalized in yeah. the media yeah. and like culture in movies about comedy and New York. You see a lot of heckling. You see a lot of alleys. I feel like <laughs> I feel like people, at least me, I picture in a New York alley. I instantly picture Batman with his two parents walking down and there's steam behind them. And there's. Yeah, but that's not New York City. That's Gotham City. Yeah. How do we. Tell I think them, it's Laura's turn. Tell them their ball's gone, dude. <laughs> the ball's gone. <laughs> How did that doorbell get through the soundproofing in <laughs> of this room? This room. It's crazy. I'm like a Pavlov There's dog. There's a skateboard above the closet that seems like it should <laughs> prevent the should have prevented the, the, yeah, you're right. It's bad. It's bad uh, engineering, to be honest with you. It's, it's actually, I've read skateboards are right next to milk cartons. Milk cr egg crates, egg because people put egg crates on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they absolutely do. 
I it we I'm glad that you said more so that the sentence was wasn't just like cleanliness cleanliness is next to godliness <laughs> and skateboards are next to egg crates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need a, need a little more on that one. <laughs> I I read that's page one in the handbook actually. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, skateboard out. Yeah. <laughs> um. So last night at the distillery. Okay. One of my probably one of my favorite moments to happen, in, in normal passing, happened while Tanya was on stage. Mm. Which did you know her name is Tanya? Tanya. Tanya, you've heard of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on, uh, yeah, we were on the Denver Comedy Underground show. Here's the experience that I had. We're in the green room, uh, and I said, I'm Mike, and she said, I'm Tanya. Nice to meet you, Tanya. And then on the show, uh, the host- Have you heard this at all? No. Introduces her as Tanya, and she comes on stage and doesn't- uh, Address it. No, no. She And then later, uh, I think- Somebody said, uh, see you later after the show. See you later, Tanya. And she said, see you later. And I and I said, you know, maybe not just immediately, not to be like a jerk. Uh, but at one point I was like, see you, see you later, Tanya. Nice to meet you. And then one of the other comedians who knew her before that day yeah, yeah, yeah. was like, is your name Tanya? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, have I been saying it wrong this whole time? Is it? I thought I was calling you Tanya. And she's yes. like, yes. either way. Um, <laughs> and so I have a friend whose name is spelled S O N Y A and some people pronounce that Sonia oh, yeah. and my friend doesn't mind if you call her Sonia and i think that if she's introducing herself she'll often say my name is Sonia uh but that's a, a name that like you can't if you have the the pronunciation that like i i spell mike a weird way yeah. and if people say it mick or meek or yeah. mioik or myuk you know whatever it You've is heard every... i can't i can't be like hey <laughs> why why are you doing you know like yeah. i get it, it put you know? some respect on it. i'm fine and yeah. so like yeah i it's really interesting to have like my name and it is you know if i tell you mike my name's rounds mike i'm mike yeah. like but to have a name it's really interesting because like what is a name it's it's the thing that as long as somebody says it and you hear it then that's how you communicate 100 like, oh, you want to talk to me yeah uh, like i get it and Sonia, like, yeah, she's like, yeah, Sonia, Sonia, like, but what do you, like, it, it truly, she's like 50-50, doesn't matter. And that's what it seems like for Tanya, Tanya. But she's never corrected anybody before. Because it's not. That's what's so fun is we've been doing wrong. comedy yeah. for four fun. years that's crazy. with this girl. And she finally is just like, and honestly, the way I heard it first was when she introduced herself to somebody this weekend. Yeah. At the show last night, she introduced herself. And I was like, is she doing a bit? She's just introducing herself named differently. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I bet if you, you know, I we don't have. I wish we had the uh, the technology of like the Daily Show. You know how like on the Daily Show that the at least back in the day they would find like every newscaster, every like you know journalist online who was saying like the exact same you know the sentence like they like yeah they're, they're like oh the this is what people are saying yeah, you know yeah. and and so if we could go back and in the past four years. Every time that she introduced herself, she's like, hi, I'm Tanya. And people are like, nice to meet you, Tanya. And she's like, yeah, oh, well, you know, every time, like Tanya, Tan every yeah. time she is like, so, you the know, evidence. I, I've only met her two days ago, uh, but I'm I'm on her side. And I assume <laughs> that she's been pronouncing her name the way she wants to like that. She's that's the way to do it. She know said it's a Canadian thing. You know what she's like? Uh, she's like the uh, Society of Friends. Do you know about the Society of Friends? I bet you do know about them by, by the name that other people call them. Other people call them Quakers. Oh, okay. Hey. Hold on. Right. Um, who's in the silver car? It's the, the across the street. Yeah. Mine. Um, can we just back it up a little bit? They got to get mulch. Yeah, they got to get their mulch. Mulch. Okay. All right. Like Let's do that. But um, <laughs> can... I know, dude. They need to stop drinking cervezas. <laughs> Coming up after this, yeah. why Tanya is like the Quakers. <laughs> Are you uh, opposed to us smoking? Oh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, we will. If it gets too smoky, we can stop. Oh, no. it's. Uh, I like... I like when other people smoke. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, I prefer it. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you being real? Um, 
I'm being real when I do when I say that I like when other people smoke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I won't say that I'm being real when I say that I prefer it. That okay. part <laughs> that is an exaggeration for humor. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like, if you were like, sh- like we want to smoke, then I want you to smoke. Okay. That's Hell fair. yeah. My uh, my dad's the same way. My really? dad like loves the smell too. Like it's, it's great. Yeah. And I like you know I think that most I'm not gonna say that people who smoke are cool or cooler like but ne- drugs are necessarily pretty cool. they're pretty cool but <laughs> they it does I think that most people that I've met are like pretty like chiller mm. when they're smoking yeah uh in part it could be just maybe it's like empirically it's usually at a time when they can be chill. Yeah. So like probably you'd be chill like in this time. <laughs> yeah. For yeah, the yeah, next yeah. hour, we'd be chill yeah. whether you were smoking or not. Uh-huh. But like, you know, if you got a big deadline at your office job and you're like, oh God, it's like it's not the time. <laughs> you know, you're, time you're, you're blunt. freaking yeah. out. You're yeah, like, yeah, all right, yeah. let me just I mean, maybe, you know, but it, maybe that's the time that it would make <laughs> Let's it. Let's hang out in the park. I'm really you. stressed. Yeah. yeah. Kind yeah. of shit. I get it. Yeah. Usually when you're chill. That is also a good time when weed happens to also show up. Yeah, yeah. When, when you when you're smoking it when you're not supposed to, like before the deadline. To, that's almost when it's like addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that sounds right. When yeah. you're pre gaming for like uh, when you gotta like smoke a blunt on your way to the dispensary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. How am I gonna get there? Um, <laughs> I would say and it's for, twenty minutes. There's some people for whom, like, for people who say, like, "Do you mind if I smoke?" Yeah. Like, that's a different level of like, you know, like you don't need to. And yeah, you know, there's some people who, you know, they they've been smoking for so long, they wake up in the morning and truly need like in, to prevent. Uh, what is it? Withdrawal symptoms, yeah. or yeah. To, to get to their to get to their normal, to yeah. get to their yeah. regular. This is me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's like well, it's like a cup of coffee for yeah. some people, and if they don't have it, they can be cranky. Weed is next to coffee, yeah, the way that egg crates are next to skateboards. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, but I'd really like to tell you: Are are we back? Are we? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Down so, Tanya. To Tanya. Yeah. So, so, is, so Tanya. Tanya, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. feel betrayed almost. Oh. I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but, uh, but I'm probably the one that betrayed her by not saying it right. When she introduced herself yeah, to the me. The betrayal is coming from inside the house. You yeah. know, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the name. Is it T? Is it T-A-N? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Tanya. That's, well, how do you say that? Tan. Tanya. Yeah, yeah, Tanya. Well. Tan? Yeah. <laughs> um, you're right. Look, uh, you're and right. not that spelling is king, but here's the, so the. The Quakers, that, yeah. that's the name. Oh, yeah, the that, secret, like, the Most group people, of, what was it? The Society so- of Friends. The Society of Friends. Yes. And uh, I, I only learned, you know, I, I heard about the Quakers when I was growing up and yeah. knew very little about them. And, like, as I was an adult and, like, learned about different spiritual traditions, I'm like, oh, they're, it's pretty sweet. Like, you know, they, they have gatherings, but they don't have, like, a leader. There's nobody who, like, gets up and talks. It's just, they're like, like, pacifists, yeah, right? Yeah, they're complete, complete pacifists. They remind uh, me of in, uh... What, I think it's the Holy Grail with Mighty Python's movie when there's like the lady messing with the mud and he, you know, King Arthur comes and he's like, I'm your king. And they're like, we don't have a king. Yeah, exactly. We elect a different leader to make a decision every two months that only a, a council approves of after 18 months of being pre-approved. <laughs> and this, You know, like yes. there's all these steps to be, uh, to, to make sure it's not like, um, a king. <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, like, the deal at their, like, you know, services, my understanding is everyone sits in silence until a point at which somebody might be moved mm. to say something, you know, yeah. by the Holy Spirit or otherwise. Mm-hmm. And until somebody quacks. Yeah. Until somebody starts quacking. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That was, it was a misspelling. It was the quack the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, and I think... Like they I, all are also white, yeah. <laughs> the Quackers. <laughs> the <laughs> the so they they were called the Quakers. I think as in like they you know quake in their boots, you know, mm. by before like trembling before God. Is that know? really? I think it's. I think that is it the might be. really. Yeah. I, that's. I'm not. I'm not 100. Yeah. percent But I do think it is something to do with that. But they they don't call themselves Quakers. They call themselves Friends, the Society of Friends. Really? Uh, and each one of them, and just this is going to sound like it's serious, but I, I just want to give this you a This is like up. Tanya this, Tanya. This part's a joke coming in a moment. They they do, the, the, so it is serious. They do call themselves Friends, and every Quaker does take on a new uh, name, and the names are all uh, either uh, Ross, Rachel, Monica, <laughs> Chandler, <laughs> Phoebe, or Joey. And uh, okay, so that part, everything else is true. And they 
recently banned all hot tubs. Yeah. In- <laughs> good, good, good pull on that friend <laughs> trivia. I was like, it probably makes sense. Oh, it's sad. And yeah, um, yeah I was like, oh, you, I, you, you get what you're saying. And, oh, no. That, that's very. Anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, they call themselves friends. Other people call them Quakers. They're so pacifistic and friendly yeah. that they're like, it's fu- Tanya, Tanya, yeah. Quakers, friends, like <laughs> close enough. She is yeah. a pacifist. Yeah, yeah you know what you, we're you talking the about. Connection, dude. Yeah. That's great. She's wow. also a communist. There you go. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. I uh, I didn't know that that they. It's like um, Germany and Deutschland. We're 100%. like we just call it our own thing and yeah, it's kind of a nickname that, huh? for us to call them quakers yeah yeah when I did think they it is like a it is it was almost like a derogatory like oh they're quaking in their i think it totally is that yeah scaredies yeah. yeah so when did they get as- affiliated with the oatmeal uh that i think i f- i remember hearing about it and i it's not gonna <laughs> stop me from saying things the fact that i don't remember any of the details but uh <laughs> i think that i think that's another situation if i had to guess that it, they are not affiliated, really, but somebody was just like, "Yeah, it seems like this will be a good people. This Mascot. is a nice, friendly old man who will sell this yeah. oatmeal." If they are connected to it, I don't know how. Yeah, yeah it was. It, it's kind of like the the more bland Aunt Jemima, really. Yeah, he's what, in because he's season? he's yeah he's in the Pilgrim fit, right? Bland Jemima, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bland Jemima. <laughs> Um, before we get, uh, into any of the bits I have written out, we should introduce our guest. Oh, yes. hey. Cause we have, I mean, a guest with some real credits. Yeah. Uh, welcome. Finally. Yeah, right. yeah, it's true. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks for coming. This is a uh, recreational outrage. The only podcast where one guy likes Rubens from Arby's and the other one looks like Rick Rubin who can only afford Arby's. Wow. wow. That was good. That's, I haven't done that one in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Great. <laughs> a combination. And our guest today, Mike Kaplan. Thanks for Ooh, being on, dude. And I look like a combination of both of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kinda, yeah. You do kind of right look now, like... the beard of one, the glasses of the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, Boo... The uh, different booze from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah, the different when he's all. Have you ever watched your Dragon Ball Z guy? I have not watched Dragon Ball Z. No. It's, it's, I, it might be surprising to yeah. some, but uh, <laughs> I know very little about it other yeah. than it was and or is. Is it still? It's still pretty popular. A TV show yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. or a video game? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all those things. And yeah. books. And a right? comic book. Yeah. 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 From. The to, somewhere in Asia, yeah, yeah, yeah. just somewhere, yeah. And the artist died. Yeah, he died recently. I did read that. Yeah, uh, rest in rest in peace. Yes. Yeah, rest in power. Yeah. Oh, shout out by the way to Akira, the, whatever his name was. Well, I was gonna say the juice. Oh, OJ. Yeah, uh, another recent loss. Yeah, we uh, used to have a bit called in memoriam, but mm. we'll just knock those two out. Yeah. Do you want to? <laughs> here's one of the the funnier jokes I saw about. O.J. Simpson. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. I saw. I saw, I saw There's a funny one. There's a funny one. <laughs> uh, Ranan Hirschberg. Do you guys know Ranan? Yeah. Uh, he posted something like this: is a paraphrase. He's like, "Now that O.J. Simpson is dead, the woke police are gonna go back uh, yeah. and trawl through his history to find that. something that he did." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't remember any uh, blemishes on his record, but yeah, he's innocent. That's all I know. Uh, I saw that Caitlyn Jenner posted uh, yes. good riddance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we should high five. We haven't done that uh, in yeah. a minute. Yeah, you get in a bad. That was bad, dude. High five. Yeah. Thank you. It. Uh, I get all fired up against um, single mothers. Yeah, he gets. He has a problem with single mothers oh. for some reason. But whatever. For whatever reason, the high five keeps him in check. I don't. Wow. Know, I don't know what it is. I don't Do- remember how we got to that conclusion, but it's been a. You talked about it on one episode for like five minutes about how they should just get jobs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, that were you raised like- by a single mother? No, not at all. Okay, double mother. No, that'd be so cool though. No, not a mom, actually. Yeah. Single Dead father. Mom. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, how long was your stepmom around? Uh, most of the time. Okay, so it's not a single father. So maybe it's that you're you're mad about that people do have single mothers when you had, you didn't even have 
a single mother. You're, you're like, why is everybody hogging all the moms? I don't have any. This is so true. true. <laughs> oh, I wish you had been here when that happened. Yeah. To be honest with you. Wow, we could have nipped that in the bud right then. I dude. feel like I should be on the couch. <laughs> lay down. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, lay down. Yeah. <laughs> and can we talk about why I don't like water? Ha <laughs> ha. He my... really is terrified of water. Yeah. Like to drink it or to swim in it? Just swimming. Okay. Yeah, drink, I'd drink say water. Yeah, yeah drinking ice. You handed me a bottle of water with a extreme, you know. But it's very controlled in that situation. If the cap was off, that's true. My, I'm, I'm uh, anxiety ridden. Oh, uh, uh, fair enough. Um, yeah, yeah. Couldn't, couldn't tell you. Did you know anyone who drowned? <laughs> like at a very young age. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you almost drown? Yeah. No. I used to be no, afraid not that of, I can uh, think of. No. I used to be afraid of down escalators because I almost fell down one once. Really? Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah. But up was fine. Yeah, up, up was fine. Were you ever scared that you'd get caught up in the in the end? I think a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Definitely. Oh, I feel like that's everybody. Though, I, a little I bit. I feared uh, burglars and uh, and crustaceans coming up through the toilet as well. To uh, burglars. Yeah, burglars <laughs> and and lobsters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that checks out, especially yeah. in New York. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I, uh, I I mean besides the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I didn't think there was any life down in the sewers. But yeah. if there is a crustacean, that would suck. Oh yeah, I mean there's probably like I don't want to you know make you freak out me. more about water, but there's like microscopic crustaceans in our water as well. You're drinking them every day. Wait, maybe not everywhere. In the bottled? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe just the tap, but maybe just the bottled. <laughs> You got got to do more research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You need a microscope. Not positive. But yeah, there was something about not positive for crabs. I read, I read <laughs> something about it because the Jewish people, my people, uh, <laughs> by by some assessments, yeah. um, some of them would be like yes, and some of them would be like mm, not quite. Mm. You do um, look like you could. I mean, yeah, I could see it. Oh yeah, I mean, not only could <laughs> I pass for Jewish, I yeah, uh, pass over for I, Jewish. I, I, I ace the test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not just getting a 61. <laughs> I'm getting at least a B plus, you know? Yeah. Well, at least your parents would be disappointed if you didn't. Uh, yeah, probably. Or, or for further generations, even more so. Grandparents, yeah. for sure. Um, but, there, you know, well, part of the kosher diet is no crustaceans. Mm -hmm. And Damn. But I believe there's some, maybe it was just in New York City also, let's say, that... Uh, it was found that there are these like microscopic crustaceans and be like, are, can Jews drink this water? Wow. <laughs> was that actually like a dilemma that they had? Is I think it, so. No. Yeah. I I think. What yeah. did they, what is the conclusion? I don't know. Probably, probably some do and some don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's my, I, without any research, that's my guess. That's basically how all religion works though. Is some do, some don't. Some, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever part of the religion. That is, is wild. Yeah. Well, I, I couldn't even think. Oh. There's a, a bit that I did last night that there's a like a a version, like a classic comedy, like Jewish joke, yeah. uh, which isn't even necessarily a joke. But the idea that whatever level of Jewish you are, anyone who is like more observant than you is a fanatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyone who is less observant than you, like, isn't even Jewish. Yeah. Like, yeah. If only people, you know, this also reminds me, I feel like this the is more like a, orthodox, the less orthodox. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, there was like a, a couple years ago, there was a, maybe Rolling Stones, like 50 funniest people right now. And there's like a list of, you know, 50 stand up comedians and, you know, like Will Ferrell types and yeah, like totally. people, but like 50, there's so many more than 50 funny people, comedians. Right actors etc and i i forget i wish i had looked at the name of who left this comment but i i think about it a lot it was like hey how come this isn't the exact same 50 people that i would pick in the exact same order that i would put them in <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing about yeah, that's the thing about those lists it's like i don't know so i bet you there's someone who probably doesn't think anybody on that list is funny oh yeah yeah uh, but I, I bet I think everybody would find, I think everyone could find one, but yeah. who knows? Yeah. yeah. Let's go back and look to 2018's Rolling Stones. Yeah. yeah. Funniest or give or take a year. Yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, I had a, a magazine that was like a hundred, the hundred greatest finishes 
in WWE, oh, okay. like finishing moves. Mm-hmm. And I remember looking through and being like, no way this is 39. Yeah. <laughs> the Swanton Bomb? Yeah. Come on, dude. But he does it off of ladders. Oh. Like arguing with a list like that. Yeah. Do you know? Uh, I you get guys, it. You guys know what palindromes are? Oh. I feel like I, is, is that's when it, uh, the word is the same reversed and forward. Yes, yeah, backwards yeah. and forwards. Yeah. Race car. Same. Yeah, race car. Yeah, I, I just released uh, a uh, a newsletter today. I put out a, a newsletter a couple, couple of weeks, some some for free, some for subscribe. Huh. And uh, this one was all about uh, beep, 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 mostly beep, 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 beep. wolves and werewolves, like just a couple jokes about werewolves and such. And I thought about naming it, uh, oh, emit wolf flow time which is because that's well, yeah, time to emit the wolf flow and yeah. emit wolf flow time is a palindrome so i thought that'd be fun yeah but then i was like that's kind of i mean not the regular way to say things and uh, <laughs> so i put that as the subtitle and i just called it werewolf bits and bites and i thought that was that, that, that nobody can argue with that or you can argue but why would you argue with the right. title of a newsletter <laughs> and uh, this is all to say uh there is a palindrome competition a palindrome writing competition uh, that is called. It has a. It has an excellent name. They. They get. Do you want to know what the competition? It's got to be a. It is a palindrome. Yeah, I was gonna and say. And it also, it's not only a palindrome. So, you, what are your fa- famous, uh, like, competitions like the Grammys? Yeah. The Emmys. Uh, this one is called the Simmies for symmetry. <laughs> That's uh, so good. And it's S M. It's S Y M M Y S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, so I've uh, for the past several years, I've been asked to be a judge for yeah. oh, this yeah. palindrome competition. Wow! And, and I, it's an honor. Yeah. Uh, and the thing about it is, there's a bunch of categories. There's the uh, best short palindrome, best medium length, Whoa. best long palindrome. Then there's it's best, like UFC. Where best, oh yeah, there's best <laughs> visual glasses. palindrome. Like there's people who <laughs> illustrate them. Yeah. And yeah, oh no, it's like they give the palindrome and then they have like a drawing of it, and that will add, you know sometimes enhance the wow. meaning of it. Yeah. And then then there's one that's poetry, and like sometimes they all end up being like poetry. Yeah. But Judging them is difficult because, you know, it's all art and it's difficult to judge art and there's Mm -hmm. a subjective component to it. But there's like, you know, are any of which of them are using like the same like word like if if one of them was like flow wolf i'd be like that is not you know that's uh, <laughs> like you got i i got to up my game yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and even like like the, if you do like where like I, I think I forget if it's like werewolf flower, uh, like ew, where, like there's something that you can do with those that like, if you're in the palindrome game, you've seen uh, a lot yeah. of palindromes, yeah. and so there's like originality is uh, one component, probably a huge key, and then but also like does it make sense mm-hmm. and <laughs> like is it about something like there was one about AI that yeah. I thought was cool like yeah. by the end of it I'm like oh yeah it's actually saying something. Um, but yeah, everybody's going to have different, a uh, set different things that are meaningful to them. It's like, wow, this one really did this well, yeah. better than this, but this one really did this well, better than this. And so kind of like, you know, like, yeah, well, this one shouldn't be 39, you know, whatever. <laughs> I feel like this is a whole new YouTube rabbit, rabbit. hole I'm about to dive into. I oh, didn't, yeah. like, I never even would have thought that there's palindrome competitions. I can't. That's, yeah. Yeah. So I people mean, are just like, they're just coming up with new things every, every day, every year. I mean, certainly every year. Yes. Yeah. This was an annual competition. And I mean, it's like, there's so many subcultures. Like, you know, there's people who don't know about comedy, right? right. There's people who've like, I mean, I'll speak for myself. Before I got into, before I started performing stand up comedy, the only comedians I knew were famous comedians who yeah. I truly thought, like, I, I saw, like, I don't know, a Norm MacDonald special, and I knew him from Saturday Night Live. The right. same thing with Dana Carvey. And, like, Paul Reiser was the first special I ever saw. St- holds up to this. I watched it when I was 13, watched it again 30 years later. That, like, yeah. Didn't watch it in between. Love him. One of my <laughs> favorites. Uh, it's on YouTube for free. Recommended. But I knew him from Mad About You. I knew him from a TV show. I knew Seinfeld from a TV show yeah. i truly thought that stand-up comedy was something that famous people did once they got famous they yeah. could then be like well now people will come see me do yeah. stand-up like not knowing that it was like literally the opposite, the opposite. that yeah. you do stand-up and then maybe it turns into a tv show i i re- we recently had somebody on the pod describe it as a cul-de-sac where like stand-up is the road and then it takes you to this cul-de-sac of like a hundred different options where like you don't know all the different routes that you're going to end up. Oh, yeah. But and like stand-up is really actually where it starts instead of the opposite way where it's like someone's a famous act. Well, oh, sometimes that happens. Yeah. But like, Can you know. Be. Yeah. 
But like for some people, like, you know, maybe you meet a friend who's like into, I don't know, uh, like burlesque or they're into like roller derby or like any subculture of like other thing performing. Yeah. Like, I don't, do you guys know the comedian Henry Phillips? Uh, he's his, hilarious. Like check out, he has a couple movies that he made called Punching the Clown and the sequel Punching Henry. Uh, and he's he's got a, a web series called Henry's Kitchen. He's one of the funniest. Do you ever, you guys know Doug Stanley? Stanhope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of Doug's first albums is called Something to Take the Edge Off, I believe, mm-hmm. is the one that has a guitarist playing in the background, and that's Henry. Henry okay. is the guitarist. His He has a ton of amazing Whoa. songs. You have an album with a music album. I though. do. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have a couple music albums. One that is a comedy music album called Please Be Seated yeah. with my friend Micah Sherman. One that is a not specifically comedy, some comedic, some just, you know, music. Yeah. Uh, music album called Many, Many Musics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> variously available. Um, but, and. Uh, sorry. I yeah, please. Totally took you off. No, no, um, no, I'll you get were there. talking about uh, Henry. Henry. Yeah. So just Henry told me a story once that he was like at a party and he met a guy who was like a balloon animal artist, you know, like, yeah. uh, uh, you know, you twist it. And so he said that in their, <laughs> in their parlance, uh, like if you were a balloon animal artist uh, and you met another balloon animal artist, you'd be like, so how long you been twisting? Yeah. You know, like they have their own lingo instantly and like the same way. Yeah, that you as comedians, like, you know, there's things that comedians say that if you're talking amongst comedians, you don't have to spell out. But if you're on a comedy podcast, yeah, like civilians, that's what we call you, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, they, and if you, you know, if you listen to comedy podcasts or you're, you know, a comedy nerd or comedy savvy, like you can like, you know, my mom now knows some comedians because she's seen me do online shows or come to see yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, her yeah. top five is almost always me and the four other comedians she saw most recently. Um, so I one point it was me the number two was paul riser we saw him live then mike birbiglia who we'd seen on broadway and then a tie at number four was seinfeld who she'd seen recently and my friend liz glazer oh, and uh who is wow. fantastic yeah. and I'd, I'd put her higher than seinfeld that's but, the thanos uh, glove of com- comedy yeah. yeah and my mom did say uh she she told me not i've i've since gotten permission but at the time she was like don't tell don't spread this around because she's like i don't want to get it back i don't want to getting back to seinfeld that i prefer <laughs> paul riser and um <laughs> That anyway. would that would bum them out. So yeah, so not not everyone knows <laughs> everything about that. There that even like stand up comedy exists in the way that yeah. it does. But there like, is those words that people start to learn, like the lingo. Uh, like it is, it's like uh, when you're in an industry of any type enough time you start to hear those certain things and it makes more sense like gaming is like that where yeah. people will say words that i have no clue what the fuck they're talking i think about. it's crazy how hip-hop and comedy have the same kind of lingo like you fucking oh. killed that shit you crushed you know oh, yeah like, there's punchlines. Yeah, yeah, murdered yeah, yeah. he's murdered. a killer yeah, yeah, yeah. um but also i think it's like the light like if you're not in comedy you don't really know i guess what that is yeah. but us you know seeing the light every single for you know comic yeah, knows exactly what we're talking about our life is flashing before our eyes and we're about <laughs> yeah. to die it's yeah. over <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah, there's so many things like that that you can like do a deep dive into once you know about them. Like, you know, probably there's in, in religion and spirituality, there's different, you know, subcultures oh, and yeah. sects. And then in, in every art form and every sport. And, you know, there's like such, there's like, there's people making money like on YouTube with like the most niche, you know, like if you have like just a thousand people <laughs> out of the eight billion people that are like, but there's a thousand people, they say, I forget who came up with this, but it's like the thousand true fans. Idea yeah, yeah, yeah. That like, if you have a thousand people who like pay for what you do, you can make then you can, that's enough to sustain a living. Yeah. yeah. And there's people doing that with things that we've never heard of. Have you ever heard of Toki Pona? No. Toki Pona uh, is. I watch a lot of okay. adult films. You've watched <laughs> <laughs> no, you, that is not. Uh, my, <laughs> my friend Gus introduced me. Toki Pona is a language. <laughs> And I be- it is a language that is, like, artificially constructed. Like, it is not spoken it is, it, and passed on amongst, like, different uh, specific cultures. Yeah. It was specifically created to be the most efficient language possible Oh, with the fewest words. I think there's, like, 119 words. In the whole dictionary. In, in the entire language. Yes. Wow. Do you know any of it? Uh, I mean, toki and pona, I think, are two different words that yeah. might mean, like, you know, talk easy or something okay. like that. Like, whatever it is. Yeah. But, like, you know, there's, like, one word that means bird and then every other bird you get by adding a different word yeah. to it. Oh. You know, like, and you can get and maybe it's, like, you can't be as specific. Like, if there's, yeah. you know, however many different species of waterfowl, you 
can like maybe get to like water bird you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> not, and not don't go too far because then like water birding you know uh sounds <laughs> a little i my apologies and that's my fi- that's the state bird of florida <laughs> is the water birding <laughs> that's the state bird of the cia yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, Bay. the enemy of the state bird yeah, yeah. Um, but uh but yeah so there's like i'd never heard of tokipona until i met my yeah. friend gus i mean he's a practicing buddhist as well and i have gone down you know I, i've learned a lot about buddhism like from him and we've actually studied uh this thing called tibetan debate mm. which is a kind of debate that in tibet uh, is like the national sport. Like, oh, like no. kids there learn it from when they're like at starting age eight to 12 or so, which is a great age to learn how to debate because that's the age they're like, ah, it was actually this thing. Like, you didn't you, you told me it was this one, but it's like a completely different format yeah. of debating. Well, it sounds like it's like uh, kids like in like the city learning how to roast each other. Yeah, You that know, it's like right. your mama jokes or whatever, where yeah. it's like how each other bonds in that, in that environment Mm -hmm. you got to be able to give shit to somebody else or whatever that's crazy that debating is there in in fact sword play uh, one of the other jokes that i did last night uh, is in the format of tibetan debate i don't describe it that way but the way that you the way that tibetan debate works is you ask how do two things compare and they can compare in a few different ways they can be mutually inclusive like they're the exact same thing like how does you know a father compare to a dad Mm. like like everything that's a father is a dad everything that's a dad is a father let's let's say and so that's they're mutually inclusive some things could be mutually exclusive you know and you could be like you know a dog and a closet you know there's nothing that's a closet that is also a dog there's nothing that's a dog (laughs) that is also a closet I hope not. Exclusive. Then you can compare the the two other basic ways are there's three possibilities or there's four possibilities. And so if something's four, po- let's say, let's do three possibilities this first. This is beautiful yeah. that you're implementing this into a joke. Oh, yeah. I know so, exactly what joke. I remember yeah, what joke you're talking 100%. about. hundred yeah. uh, so percent. But in non-joke form, if you ask like, what, how, do is, how does a dog compare to a mammal? Three possibilities. E- there's it, things that are mammals and dogs. Yeah. There's things that are mammals and not dogs. And there's things that are neither mammals nor dogs. And that's everything. The Venn diagram. Uh, yeah. And yeah. So, yeah, you can do it with the And so the Venn diagram for four possibilities is like, let's say, wife and mother like there's there are four possibilities because think there's something that could be a wife and a mother there could be something that's neither a wife nor a mother there could be something that's a mother but not a wife and there's something that could be a wife but not a mother okay and so and that's that's how it works out and so look if you didn't know me you'd never learn this yeah (laughs) (laughs) tibetan debate but i mean it's you can go down all of like the rabbit hole here's a is tibet the place that they even debate whether it's a spot uh, I mean, it is <laughs> one of those places. It, yeah. it is a nebulous, like you know, political, like legal okay. situation where, like, the Dalai Lama is, you know, the I believe the certainly the spiritual leader, if not the actual governmental leader, really as well. But Tibet the, the, itself is, uh, you know, that's why he gets to suck on their tongues. <laughs> that's that, why that part is that's the uh, ultimate debate problematic. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah I, I think there's probably some cultural explanation, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we don't have to throw out all of the babies. With the, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, move yeah. the babies away from the bathwater, but uh, <laughs> at least but, away from the tongue. Yeah, 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 yeah. from that, the if, tongue if water. You're yeah. born in a d- debate of a country. Country. I can see why you would your wow. national sport would yeah. be debate. Yeah. It checks out, and uh, you know Tibet Check almost sounds like debate as well. Tibet, you know, yeah. Hey, what do you want to? You want to? I did high school Tibet, you know. Yeah. Um, exactly. Early Tibet, early to rise, you know. Is, uh, that's not nothing. Also, but uh, there's this uh, there's this allegory that I learned uh, from a friend of mine goes to this particular synagogue, and the rabbi there was doing a sermon one holiday. And the this rabbi quoted who he got this concept from, uh, which is a thing uh, happens a lot in a, a joke I tell sometimes is that the Talmud, which is like one rabbi said a thing that another rabbi said in response yeah. to another rabbi. You got to shout, you you go go to shout to, out your sources. Yeah, yeah, you go down a real rabbi hole, and um, <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Uh, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> citing sources is valuable. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's good because like. Like not, none of us is like ev- none of us created ourselves. You know, we're yeah. all like coming from somewhere, and that's the way ideas work as well. And obviously, like for a joke, we don't have to be like I got this joke from. But there's actually like a a George Carlin 
uh, album where at one point he's like, Lenny Bruce said this, and what I say is this. And yeah. it's like, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and like Todd Glass will sometimes be, do an impression of Brian Regan and say that's what he's doing. And like yeah. Brian Regan is not, you know, famous to everyone. In fact, to my mom, uh, she went on a cruise once and there was a uh, comedian on the cruise and the comedian was Dennis Regan, who is Brian <laughs> Regan's uh, brother who also does stand-up comedy oh, wow. and they work together a lot. And But you could, most people, if you know that's one crazy Regan- how many brothers. Yeah do that because there's like tony and chris right yeah we're like tony is not and jordan jordan, uh, rock? jordan rock does he do comedy he does i didn't know that yeah well wow. damn he's absolutely not the jordan of comedy <laughs> yeah he's, he's the brother. michael jordan of rock yeah. um, does that mean anything sounds like it does don't look at don't look too closely but, how was uh, dennis so most most comedians or most people who yeah. know one Regan know Brian Regan yeah. because he has uh, an objectively like larger uh, like body Reach. of work and yeah. fan yeah. base. And uh, but my mom went on this cruise and she was like, do you, she always asks me, uh, do you know this comedian? And I'm like, I do know. I know Dennis Regan. We've met a few times. Like we're friendly. And uh, I was, she so she'll ask me because my mom doesn't love like uh, like swearing. She's like. Uh, so I'll be like, she'll be like, should I go see Anthony Jesselnik? I'm like, maybe <laughs> she enjoyed him. Like he's not, a, he yeah. doesn't swear a ton, yeah. but like, if she's like, should I go see Amy Schumer? I'm like, maybe not, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, but Re Brian Regan, she's going to see Brian Regan like in a week or two and uh, has never seen him before, but has see saw Dennis Regan on a, on a cruise yeah. several years ago. She's so about to see Gallagher one. <laughs> and uh, up until this point, <laughs> if you ask my mom, who's Brian Regan, she'd be like, oh, that's Dennis Regan's brother, <laughs> you know? Funny. Honey. Uh, and, no so, <laughs> and so this is all to say, yeah, I mean, she, my mom's an original, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is all to say uh, that the Rabbi Kligfeld, uh, who I got permission <laughs> from to share the story on my podcast once, but the idea is basically that there's a huge, a wall or a sheet, whatever it is, on the other side of it is like something representing the universal like truth that is like the light and love of God, you know, like whether you believe in God or not, just the idea of like the common thing that the moon that all the fingers of religion are pointing to, you know, that compassion and forgiveness and self love and in Buddhism, which doesn't have a God, you know, it's still about uh, helping all sentient beings have uh, like more joy and less suffering. And that, yeah. that, that, that's what we're all out. Every sentient being is out yeah. for more joy and less suffering. Whether you believe it in you know a metaphysical way or a metaphorical way or just like yeah like you know most atheists would also be like yeah i think uh, all things being equal let's yeah. have more joy and less suffering yeah. for all and so the this wall or this sheet uh, with the light behind it yeah. has a bunch of holes in it in the story in this allegory is um and each hole like if you're standing far back like this and some of this might be my interpretation of it you can see a bunch of different holes and you can sort of <laughs> see the light coming vaguely like yeah. through them and but glimpses you could also like go up to any one and like and the closer you get to one yeah, like clear. then the 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 more deep Clear. a blast of light you get from the the Judaism hall, the Orthodox Jewish area, okay. or the Christian one, or yeah. the this you know every one of those different fingers. sect, or the atheism one, or the psychedelics one, or the you know the meditation one, or yeah. the different you know you can go into different kinds of meditation. Yeah. And, uh, like is that the, no? Because that rabbi told you this, right? Yes. Is, so is that from the Talmud? Um, or I'm, like a, I'm not sure because I think this rabbi got it from a Christian minister. So oh, like I don't think it is from uh, I don't think it requires any particular or even I don't know if it originates in like Christianity yeah. and then was like but this makes sense for Judaism also yeah. or if it's just like so bro it's broad enough that it's like really all paths up the, are uh, up the same mountain yeah you know? well I think that's usually the best mm. honestly when you can kind of connect them to all of the things because they all you're right like all the fingers do point in the same direction so there are those ultimate truths that do kind of encapsulate all of them yeah and uh and so i feel like that's for anything this is i mean the analogy i'm drawing it for is like you go up to the wall and you look through and if you get closer and closer you can like learn more and more and like in one lifetime like you can't learn everything there is to learn about like one thing probably mm -hmm. you know one certainly an ancient you know like teaching or what have you yeah. but and that's the same for you know skateboarding yeah. culture it's the same for burlesque culture it's the same for roller derby culture it's the same for like any of 
these things that we like, we didn't even know that was like quantum computing or yeah. w- what have you. AI now, like all these things. Pentagrams. Yeah. Wait, what was it? Yeah, good question. Pendulums. Yeah. Pendulums, yeah. Wait, no, what were they? Uh, palindromes. Palindromes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was like, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pentagrams, absolutely. You can learn a lot about those. Yeah. You can learn about pendulums as well. Yeah. <laughs> you can learn a lot about Pendulette from Penn and Teller, 100%. Yeah. Binoculars, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it is true that you could also you can spend an entire lifetime focusing on one thing and not even come close to getting it all yeah. and uh to throw to actually do justice to the the rabbi's story his one of his purposes in sharing this uh this analogy is to talk about like the beauty it is to share a life with one romantic partner, like the right romantic partner, which I, up until the partner that I have now, like I was married in my twenties and we were monogamous, monogamously married. And after uh, we determined that we were not compatible and stopped being married, I was like, well, maybe monogamy is not the thing for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, like many people are like, Oh, a, a thing, an open relationship didn't work. Well that they never work. I was like a monogamous relationship didn't work. I don't think they'll ever work. Yeah. And now, <laughs> But now with the partner that I have with my girlfriend, Rini, uh, she's like, it's a relationship unlike any that I've ever had. And like all the reasons that I thought I would want to be in open relationships in yeah. the past and did want to be in them was like to find the kind of experience that I have now to find this like love that, you know, deepens and heightens comfort. Like, yeah, com- like completely. And that. If for any in this lifetime, you know, if I spend time going out on dates with other people, that would be time that I'm like, well, but I, I want to keep hanging out with this person yeah. who's the best. And like, you know, I still have like, I feel like the the energy that I once put into like dating multiple people, I'm putting into like friendship with multiple people. I'm like yeah. polyplatonic now. And like I can still <laughs> get to know people and like, you know, essentially have loving connections with people yeah. in ways that aren't romantic, that aren't yeah. sexual. Relationships. Uh, that, yeah, that, yeah, 100% that like sometimes in like the polyamorous community, there, there's a term called uh, relationship anarchy, mm. uh, which is basically the, uh, it's- it sounds an- cool. As a, yeah, it, it sounds cool. Cool as fuck. Oh, yeah. 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 Meaning to sex pistols. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the brand of skateboard, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> relationship anarchy. And relationship anarchy uh, is basically the idea is it's as opposed to hierarchical polyamory where some people were like, we are primary partners. You know, we're oh, married. Yeah. We live together. Okay. We, we share a life in a way that I don't with other partners. I have secondary partners maybe who live yeah. in a different city or I might see from time to time or, you know. Totally. But, and there are some people who do solo polyamory, which is they're like, I don't have any partners. And that's sort of like compatible with, uh, with relationship anarchy where relationship anarchy is kind of modeled after friendship in a way where maybe you have a best friend. The Quakers. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe you have a society of friends, you know? But no, I don't think the Quakers would be at all okay with this. <laughs> no, I think they're fine. Yeah. Uh, they'd be cool. Like, uh, if you say so, yeah, pendulum, yeah, yeah go there. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> as long as I don't have to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 100%, the, like, for most people's friendships, I think, you don't rank them. You right. might be like, oh, these are people I'm like, I talk to more or I'm closer to. But and you might have like circles of like closeness, like a couple that you're like, I talk to these people more often than anybody else and then yeah. some people that you're like you know on like a friendly basis with like as a comedian you're like oh yeah I'm excited to see this person every time I see them and we never hang out outside of like you know coincidence and that's yeah. totally that's fine and so there are these sort of like natural levels of like yeah the, like a an internal like hierarchy that it doesn't have to be spelled out yeah. but you're like yeah this is the person that I go bowling with this is the person that I go to these kinds of movies with this yeah. is the person that I get a bite with this is the person that I just like hang out with at the gym yeah. and you don't have to be like well but what order are they in right <laughs> what is the order of friendship like who is my bet who's my better who's my secondary and so that's what uh, relationship yeah. anarchy is about for people uh, obliterating that that, that ranking like, yeah i like i hang out with this person on mondays and this person on thursdays and this person when i'm in georgia and, and this who person, knows about friday right yeah who yeah. even knows yeah uh and yeah and so when i listened to this guy's i think my, my friend shared this sermon with me about like monogamy and how when you're with the you know the person that you choose to be with that you like hopefully is a a healthy functional like you know emotionally rewarding relationship in the like i 
truly like I had some good relationships. I had some good partners that like they were short term, you know, like that's the word I was like, going to say is like when you're in a good relationship, it feels like a good partner. Like it feels like somebody who boosts you and helps you and ab- stuff like that. And hopefully you both feel that way about each other. Like, yeah, there's a, a joke I've seen a few places, but on the American office where when it finally came out, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the office, it came out uh, decades ago, Spoiler um, already. but Jim, <laughs> Jim and Pam at a, at a, were dating secretly yeah. for a while. And they're like the, the Ross and Rachel, the will they, won't they, you know, of the whole thing, like that they're going to get together. When is it going to happen? Yeah. How's it going to happen? They and eventually. A, yeah. And what a buildup. Yeah. Years late. They years into the show, they get together. They're keeping it a secret from everyone else. Yeah. And eventually it comes out. They share the, information with everyone and i remember dwight played by rain wilson he's like looking directly to camera he, he's just found out that they're in a romantic together un- union and he says i think they could both do better yeah <laughs> and that's so funny and it's like a zen koan because it mostly doesn't make sense yeah. uh, but there is something to, it, it means that he he could do better than what he's doing right now yeah yeah, yeah. but i feel like my relationship with Rini uh is like we not that we could both we could do it's the opposite of we could both do better like totally. we both are like this is like we're both somehow putting each other on a pedestal yeah. that is a you know we're like wow you're amazing in these ways i'm like you're amazing in these ways and like for us there's actually bringing some, out those qualities in yeah, each other and, uh, and yeah helping elevate us both to we're both on the same level and also like continually growing with each other like one way that we're like complementary is like i'm like she's very good with space, like in mm. figuring out, like in whether it's packing our car in a way that's like Tetris perfection, you know, or yeah. in our new home, or even just very being spatially like, aware. Yeah, and like the only place I have that awareness is parking a car. Yeah. Uh, I'm well, very good at parallel parking, York. but everything else, I'm like, I I don't think that this object is going to. She's yeah. like, I'm like. You're going to put that bookcase in that corner between those two <laughs> things. She's like, it's going to fit perfectly. And it does. And I, that's am badass. Good, the way that she's good with space, I'm good with time. And so like, it really works well Whoa. for like us to be like, you know, if I'm like, well, the, the movie starts at this time. So we're going to have to leave by this time. So I'm going to have to tell her that we have to leave by this yeah, time yeah, yeah. and we'll leave perfectly and get there. And she'll be like, why don't we just dance instead? I'm like, that'll work too. We can yes. dance on the way to the movies or whatever. Space but, and time yeah. coming t- together. You guys are the time space continuum. Yeah, she is Mother Earth and I am Father Time. Yeah. You know, it <laughs> works out perfectly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's beautiful. It's it's that really nice. is. It's it's really nice. And so yeah, so congrats. I, I'm glad. Thank you. I've really yeah, I mean, if you're in a relationship, I hope you can find one that's as good as mine, but it can't be. It's impossible yeah. because <laughs> Rini is objectively the best. Uh, she's the only person who's out there, could be the one for everyone, but uh, is the her. one yeah, yeah, yeah n- nailed it. Um <laughs> locked it down with a non marriage and um <laughs> but yeah, so Are he, just thinking about lock okay you know you like you got her you know like you gotta say locked her down because you can't say locked up Ah. about like a woman you can't be like yeah i got her locked up you're right (laughs) i mean i also think uh lock her down is problematic as well Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, locked it like, you know, the idea that, you know, you're both you know, tying the knot is uh, yeah. another phrase that is often associated with getting married. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't like put one as like the owner keeping yeah. the other in a cage, you know, <laughs> that, you know, you're you're metaphorically tying yourselves to one another. But, yeah, don't lock people up. Don't don't lock things <laughs> don't lock down. down. You don't, like set them free. You yeah. know, let them come back. I was just <laughs> I was just listening to something about freedom and I'm trying to remember what it was. I remember the exact shape of it, but it's like, if you are, maybe it was on Dan Savage's podcast, which is a podcast I love, uh, but it, it also might've been an Alan Watts talk that I listened to recently. I forget who, it was either some, you know, like sex and relationship advice, yeah. a columnist or a spiritual Watts, teacher. Yeah. yeah, it could have been. And, <laughs> some kind of shaman. But it was the idea of like, oh, oh, I, I remember who it was. It was in my, my waking up app that I listen to, I meditate with each morning. And I was listening to Joan Tollefson. I don't know if that's how you say it, but she is a uh, a spiritual guide, a teacher. And I believe she was talking about addiction and she's like uh, th- her history with, you know, alcohol addiction and drug addiction. And, yeah. um, and talking about if you want to stop smoking, like if you think that you can't, I say as you light up right now, <laughs> um, if you want to stop smoking, um, like, but you think that you can't, like, 
there are ways that you can like be more present with it in a way that will hopefully help you get to a place where uh, you don't eventually you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And like there's a huge it was like a half an hour talk that I recommend. Uh, But she said, like, if you are free to smoke, then you are free to stop smoking. Yeah. And sometimes having it as an idea, like I have to. A black and white. Yeah. Then you will, you will hold yourself, you know, you will beat yourself up and like, you know, be, and, and it'll not be practically helpful. Like, but you, and I, I probably the Alan Carr, like, you know, the easy, the simple way to quit smoking. I forget what his book is, but I, I haven't read that, but I feel like it's a similar type of deal. He's like, by the end of this book, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to stop smoking. Like yeah. at the beginning, like you don't have to, yeah. you know, know like that oh, it's yeah it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's gentle like, and compassionate mm-hmm. uh-huh and i also think that that's got to be true because it is how you frame it mentally where it's like oh i can be a non-smoker i just have to choose to be a non-smoker yeah it's not whether you want to smoke or not it's whether you choose that actual path and you have to just actually be you, you know that and yeah, i used to drink like i don't know not eight or nine cokes every day, dude, and I just wow. made a decision not to, not that it's changed anything, but I just to, just to stop, you know. And then I, but everything else, I don't know. I've never been able to stop anything else. So. Do y'all know uh, <laughs> James Clear, the author of uh, Atomic Habits? Uh-uh. One of the, I think, last year maybe the best selling book in the world, okay. yeah. and a couple of years ago as well came out maybe a few years back, and it's basically about establishing good habits in your life or like the, you know, if you want to start exercising, if you want to quit smoking, if you want to, whatever it is that you want to do, part of it, uh, there's a couple, there's so many like, like really helpful nuggets on every page. Well, I remember one is like, in order to improve a habit first, you have to establish it. Mm. So if like, you want to start exercising every day, don't make a plan to you're like, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm gonna work out an hour. Be like, I'm going to do one push up. I'm going to do yeah. one jumping jack. Yeah. And it's, it makes it the opposite of fake it till you make it because yeah. you're not faking it. You're actually doing it. Mm-hmm. It's, and he, he also talks about having the idea, like uh, changing your identity because you're going, you want to go from, if you're like, I'm a person who doesn't exercise to, I want to be a person who does exercise. And by doing it, he's like every, every action that you take is a vote for the kind of person that you want to be. Yeah. That's uh before he became what he is now, but that's like the thing that like Jordan Peterson's whole thing with the making your bed and cleaning like people simplify it was like, ah, oh, it's the making your bed, but he's saying oh, that he because, says to make your bed? No thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm but, done with but my like bed. the whole point of it was like if you feel like you can't like if your life is chaotic and you can't get your life together, we'll get one thing together, focus on that and show yourself that you can get something yeah. together. And that shows that you can get your life together. So, yeah. so something smaller. Yeah. My buddy uh Gus the aforementioned Buddhist is also a therapist and also somebody who uh, has had time management issues himself and he, he can help people with it and mm-hmm. also need help with it himself, you know? Oh yeah. Classic uh, like house, you know, uh, or <laughs> you're, or monk, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. geniuses who uh, like, if only they could turn it inward. But uh, uh, Gus told me about this thing called the, uh, the golden rules of time management. And uh, I think I forget where they came from, but one of them is like to essentially make the first step of a task so small that it's almost like nothing. He's like, and the idea is like, if if the first step is too big or too hard, he's like, then you haven't. Bre- yeah. Then that you got to break it down further until the first step is something that's literally like doing one push up. Yeah, yeah. Your your task shouldn't be. I want to do this. For a month. It yeah. should be, I want to do this tomorrow. Yeah, once. Yeah. Today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. Everybody listening, do one push-up. Yeah, right now. If you want. Or whatever yeah. that one or thing squat. is that you want to do. Yeah. yeah. You or know? do squat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't have to. Yeah. It is crazy how, like, even with me, I, in the last week, have focused on writing more jokes. And as long as I force myself to do that, it actually happens. And then you get more stuff. And it, it you see the fruit from that. But you have to just... Do that small thing of sitting down, yeah. grabbing a scrap of paper, writing two words, and being like, "What's funny about this?" You know, <laughs> what two words? It's always something different. Oh, it's never the, not the same two words. No, you just write down the word "two" and the word "words." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good should, starting you, you point. Start writing palindromes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. honestly, word row. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I 
I guess I don't have a brain that can that can do that. Hey man, all you have to do is do one a day. You're right. Just yeah, you're right. You're. We'll do them together. Yay, we'll be yay is a we'll, paladin. There yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> we'll do them together. It'll be like we'll be pen palindrome. Yeah, every week pen we need pen palindromes. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> every week we need to come back with a new palindrome. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> you can start small. Just yeah. find word like yay that yeah. already are, or like toot. You know, toot. Wow, sass. Eventually, you'll work your way up to things like an owl saying it's too hot to hoot. You know. Is that a palindrome? That's a famous palindrome, yeah. Wow. Too, too hot to hoot. Too hot to hoot. Yeah. Do you Damn. know the famous, I mean, I don't mean to blow anyone's mind with things Please that have existed for years, but I need uh, it blown. <laughs> attributed to Napoleon, who spent the, you know, the final years of his life on the Ice Isle cream. of Elba. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he and he was in great shape before he got there and died there. Mm. And so the, the this might be the mo- one of the most famous palindromes in the world is Abel was I, ere I saw Elba. That's crazy. Yeah. And so, wow. And then <laughs> the uh, the Panama Canal was also the- Do you the, think he did that on purpose? Oh, I don't know if he said it at all. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's so funny. But also, if he did, yeah, I mean, the, if he did, it was probably on purpose. He's the original uh, palindrome yeah, champion. Yeah. yeah. Napal- Napaleonodrome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Napaleonodrome. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we did it. Yeah. Uh, another famous one is- uh, um, for about the person who conceived of the Panama Canal. Mm. It's a man, a plan- a canal, Panama. That's a, oh my gosh, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, so there's people out there just making them. Hey, well, here's one I came up with years ago. Uh, yeah. is, uh, this one's about this a guy original. Who, he's really upset that uh, his pal Andrew had uh, stolen his uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, you know, oh, his, his genetic material. Yeah. And he's like, Andy, my DNA. That's... Uh, that's my palindrome. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's good. It's pretty fun. Andy, my DNA. Yeah. That's totally wow. Yeah. And uh, do you uh, do you think you've ever heard one and it just met line? I don't know. That's crazy because my brain doesn't work like that either. I'm yeah. trying to think of where I would even start with something like that. Well, I recommend everyone follow my friend Zach Sherwin. Okay. Uh, who also uh, not just palindromes, but all all sorts of word and concept play yeah. abound uh he's uh wordplay is beautiful yeah. written it is so cool that that stuff doesn't always translate like well, in stand-up wise there's but- some that does there's some that's great for writing and there's some that's great for spoken here's my favorite I, I I said I'd say this is probably a pun. Certainly, it's my favorite wordplay that I didn't come up with, or one of them historically. Sure, yeah. I got a lot of favorites, but this one is uh, you may maybe you've heard this uh, champagne for my real friends and real pain for my sham friends. <laughs> <laughs> like I, it's uh, good because it it does the structural thing. It has the form and function. Yeah, Some, I think what sounds what, like something a cool rapper like a would say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What word? <laughs> yeah, what wordplay? Like the reason that wordplay sometimes I feel like gets a bad rap is that it maybe is more form than function, mm. you know. But if it really says something, yeah. What Jay Z says, I'm a businessman, not a businessman. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, incredible. Though if you actually look at those, that's really kind of the same words. So it's not his best rhyme, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, here's what there's one that I always get exact not exactly right, but it's something like uh, I box lefty and often my pops left me an orphan. Uh, <laughs> like yeah, he's yeah. he's good. Yeah. When uh, when uh, Jello from uh, uh, Dead Kennedys ran for mayor, he would do when he was campaigning. He would call it uh, shaking babies and kissing hands. Ha! Yeah. And I thought that was like such a funny way of putting Super it. fun, super fun. <laughs> yeah, there, like there's a lot of fun out there to be had, folks. So, <laughs> Yeah, wordplay is cool. I also like, as somebody that when I do read, it's usually a comedy book. I mm. think that that's the only place it really like highlights its best when you can actually read it. I guess memes. I think the best place to view wordplay is on uh, Asian restaurant names. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like the Titanic is one that I've seen. Um, walk just all to be day. Clear, I don't think that. It, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, walk, walk on by. Um, <laughs> Spicy chicken bistro. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're getting there. You're getting there. Uh, uh, tie the knot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah Thai restaurant that you can get married at. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. I think <laughs> the other thing that is like that makes it so that puns aren't always enjoyable for everyone is that if you've heard it, 
then the second like you can hear it once and be like oh yeah and then you can hear it a second time and be like why did you do this to me yeah. you know like <laughs> that if you've like there's or so if many it's out too there. far of a stretch yeah if oh, yeah, the absolutely. pun is too far of a stretch that's when you're like all right yeah. relax what are you doing yeah <laughs> unless that's the thing of it you know that you can make an art out of doing it going too far yeah but here's here's a i wonder how we're going down the rabbit hole of my life experience now my so my friend zach and i uh who i just mentioned zach sherwin check him out uh we will you know share if we see uh, either in the world in the wild in people's work in people's comedy like particularly you know like powerful, good, you know, jokes in this vein. We will share them with another. We will, if we come up with them ourselves, yeah. share them sometimes. Um, sometimes we do a thing called, do you know what spoonerisms are? A spoonerism is, uh, so tell me your full name. Evan, or yeah, Evan Fitzgerald. Mm, that won't work as well with you. D Dylan, tell me your full name. Uh, Dylan Cantor. Dylan Cantor. Okay, yours is going to be pretty good. So you, a, a spoonerism version of your name is Killin' Danter. Okay. So it's where you take the first letters, of two words and switch them. I do yeah. this, uh, I do that on accident. Yeah. All the time when the I'm like in normal speech. Yeah. I always thought it was dyslexia. In spormal niche, it could be, yeah. Um, spormal <laughs> niche is normal speech, yeah, yeah. As, a, as a spoonerism. The reason they're called spoonerisms is because the person they're named after was a guy named <laughs> Reverend Spooner, yeah. and he just did it accidentally yeah. all the time. Like That's crazy. Pea soup, sea poop, and whatnot, and, yeah. you know, <laughs> saying let's hear it for the queer old Dean when he meant the dear old queen. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's... Maybe that's how he spoke in tongues. Uh, yeah. And so and sometimes, so Zach and I, we came up with uh, a concept of do not spoonerize. Like if we see two words and it would be like oh, not safe for work. Yeah. Like sometimes on the on the side of the highway, you'll drive by a thing and it'll just say call box. And we're like, do not spoonerize, yeah. you know, like not safe for your mom, you yeah. know. Uh, and then sometimes we're like, oh, this one would be interesting to spoonerize. And sometimes it does involve like, you know, doing a little work to be like, oh, what's this one? Oh, this there's a sign up there for a, a lane shift. Oh, that's fun. Our buddy, Mr. Moss, the comedian Shane Moss, uh, maybe if you had to pick him up off the ground, you'd have to do a Shane lift, you know? And yeah. that's one, of course, one that, yeah, too far. Like that one, well, I wouldn't do that on stage whatsoever, but on a podcast with no audience, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so Zach well, and I seeing yeah. those is also like it's like seeing like a, a like a little pattern almost yeah. and you're solving a problem that nobody even needs solving. E exactly. Yeah. I mean and a thing that this is funny. I was uh, I was following I read Michael Ian e. Black's newsletter and he was uh he shared about uh he's into poker and he he shared maybe a quote from some expert poker player about how or somebody was talking about poker. I forget. Uh, I think maybe it was like a scientist, whatever it was, somebody said about poker, it's like when you, when you're playing poker, like the thing that's rewarding about it is that you're basically, you know, creating order out of a chaos, you know, like yeah, you, there's yeah, all yeah. these chaotic possibilities and then there's you're all these finding. possible patterns. Uh -huh. Right. And, and then I, that reminded me of a thing that, uh, Stephen Sondheim said once, which was, you know, he's uh, one of the greatest musical creators of all time. And he said basically that all art, like the purpose of all art is to create, uh, or to discover, to find yeah. order in the chaos mm -hmm. uh -huh. of world. And that's like what, what everything is. So of course it's when we're pattern seekers, we're, you know, story finders, you know, we're categorizers as human. It's good. It's helpful to keep us alive yeah. to be like, my friend died when he ate a plant that looked like that. So maybe I'll eat a different looking yeah. plant or like my friend stayed away. It didn't stay away from a creature that looked like that. And he got eaten. So I'm going to stay away from creatures that look like that. Sometimes we, you know, zoom in too much or out not enough or whatever it might be but yeah it makes complete sense why you know the patterns in like in words and phrases and things that we find yeah in the world or even like like a mitch hedberg one of my favorite mitch hedberg jokes one of the first ones i ever heard was the uh uh do you ever notice on a traffic light green means go and yellow means yield but on a banana it's just the opposite yeah. it's like green means hold on <laughs> yeah. yellow means go ahead yeah. and red means where the fuck did you get that banana at yeah. and like that's so f like that's a i feel like there's some jokes i mean we're all working with the same basic you know brain human brain yeah. and objective as possible world around us Yeah, the same dictionary but all these yeah that we didn't make m most of us didn't make up the language we're speaking except for toki pona right yeah. and <laughs> We're all working with, you know, like a palette of colors and shapes and concepts that everyone else has to work with. And so some people are like, he's like, oh, yeah, like nobody else. 
up to that point that I know of had looked yeah. at bananas and traffic lights yeah. and found that connection. And that connection doesn't does it help us do anything other than experience joy? But what what more than you what more do you want than to experience joy? Yeah. One one additional thing I wanted to share is Zach and I have these sort of uh like let's say pet peeves of of <laughs> wordplay that's not good enough. Yeah. Sure. Like yeah, wordplay yeah. that is if too far a stretch. So Something low, low franking, low hanging fruit. Low franking hoot. Yeah, you, you just did it. I, you 100%. <laughs> low franking hoot. Yeah. I really do do it on accident it. Uh, a lot. It's, That's it's crazy really that it happened there. Yeah. I mean, probably because we talked about it, your brain got primed to oh, do it yeah. even more. Yeah. So let's stop talking about it right after this. But are you familiar yeah. with anagrams? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's I wonder where it means others. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Ginger. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, uh, the Tim Minchin song. Yes. You exactly. Know that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the song called Prejudice. Everybody check out Prejudice. Uh, Tim Minchin's one of my faves. Uh, so, but sometimes that like they're very cool. Like there's, you know, I, I don't know if you're on the same, you know, email joke forward lists that my friend Zach and I are on. But every once in a while somebody will send you, hey, did you notice these lists of anagra anagrams? And uh, it's like dormitory anagrams to dirty room. Whoa. We're like, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And but every Desserts, once in a while. Stressed. Yeah, um, and a hundred percent. That one's that's a pal. That's a a pal. Oh. You put it backwards and forwards because you don't have to scramble them. That's, that's right. Stressed yeah, 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 and yeah. is the is the reverse of dessert. That's right. So dessert stressed is a palindrome. You just made your first one. Look at that. Wow. Pet palindromes. <laughs> ding ding. <laughs> Uh, but every once in a while, people will like add, ec they'll be like, oh, this one's almost an anagram. Yeah. What if we did the President Calvin Coolidge? You know, <laughs> like, no, it's it'll be cool if it's Calvin Coolidge or President Calvin Coolidge, yeah. but not, you know, to whom it may concern the, pre you know, exactly. And so every once in a while, we see one of those out in the wild and we'll text each other and be like, look, a new the President Calvin Coolidge. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so that's fun. That's, that's like the. Uh, a uh, stereotypical example of that one is uh, the, that the for us. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what, what it becomes called. That's code word for. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. Um, like, uh, have you heard of a, a Monda green? Mm -mm. You, you'll know what these are. Is it better on the other side? <laughs> very, very fun. <laughs> <laughs> you've had fun. You've had, you've had your fun. <laughs> and now, now learn, uh, now learn what I'm about to share with you, which is, uh, here, here's a classic Mondegreen. It's uh excuse me while I kiss this guy, uh, you know, a misheard song lyric. Okay. It's because there's some song th that it's named after yeah. where it went and he laid them on the green or something like that, but then it was misheard as Lady Mondegreen. Oh, wow. Lady okay. Mondegreen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard uh excuse me while I kiss this guy. While I heard uh kiss this guy. Yeah. One hundred percent. I had that It uh, sounds like it. Where a friend like turned up the lyrics, he was like, "This is my favorite part," and I was yeah. like, "That was a weird thing." <laughs> <to work. laughs> really highlight while it's just you and I in the car together, yeah. dude. All right, okay, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's I'll cool. Yeah. It's not bad. It's Grown good lyrics. Since then. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, very, very polite about it. Yeah. Yeah. Turn, yeah. Around. Turn away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a private moment. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, I but that's so because it's like Bernstein Bernstein kind of, it's Tanya oh, the, yeah. Tanya. Tanya. Uh, yeah, that that's, that's the uh, uh the Bernstein Bears. What what's that called now? Uh oh, I want to Mandela. what it's called, the Mandela effect. Yeah. yeah. It, here's a quick 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 joke of, of mine about the Mandela. The Mandela effect is when you really don't remember that the Berenstain Bears died in prison, yeah. Um, yeah. or believe that they do. Whichever yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah. is, not, I forget. I forget if they did or didn't. You yeah. know, it's always hard to, hard to remember. Uh, but yeah, that's. I mean, that's an interesting thing too, be, for the very reason that, like, I mean, back in a in a Buddhist framework, like. There only is what's happening now. Like everything that happened before is a memory, is a story, is a concept. Like we don't have any way from here and now to, actually prove. to be to objectively look at what we saw yeah. in you know in the eighties. Right. Totally. You know, and obviously these days with you know technology that we have, we can be like, okay, well at least there's a video, but there's deep fakes. There's uh -huh. you know audio, but whatever. Like. There are you, know, you can't we, touch it, you can't smell it, you yeah. can't all that kind of stuff. And and so it's pretty like that was a weird thing that like I don't even remember experiencing the thing of it. I just learned it as oh yeah, did you know that everyone thought it was this and yeah. it's it actually was this the whole time. I was like oh 
No, I didn't. <laughs> I guess I would have said, if you asked me before you told me that, I would have been like, yeah, Baron Stein, Baron Steen. Yeah. yeah. Definitely it's funny not that Baron that's the Stain. one, too, that we yeah. always use as the example. Because mm-hmm. there are a ton of those examples, There's but the, that's the one that the everybody... Sinbad as a as genie. a genie one. Yeah. Was he yeah. not a genie? He was not. What was he? Uh, he was a comedian. A comedian. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't a movie with him as a genie? No, no, not at all. Not at there all. was Shaquille O'Neal in Kazam, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but people think that... Uh, Sinbad was in Shazam. Shazam, and he wasn't. That's not a yeah. No, it wasn't. No, I, a thing. I remember. I feel like I remember. You specifically watching. said Shazam, which is the thing that they people say that it is. Yeah, but it's, it's so. Sh- so why do I feel like I'm? You know what it is. <laughs> you, you know, it's actually it's actually a spoonerism uh, acting on <laughs> yeah. you because it's Shaquille in Kazam. It totally not is, huh? Kakil or Sinbad in Shazam. Uh, it Whoa. doesn't work perfectly. That one's that one's a bit of a the president Calvin Coolidge. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're just you're experiencing being a part of our society and being successful. So if I watch Sinbad Kazam, didn't actually die in jail. Mm-hmm. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you watched the the Shaquille O'Neal genie movie, It'd like be, that's the closest thing I think you could have to the Sinbad genie movie. That or the way he's dressed in Good Burger. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it the, Good Burger? I remember. I don't know the he movie might. that he's in with. That he uh, looked, is he dressed kind of like more like a genie? Yeah, he was in super nineties like Nickelodeon clothes. He ah, looks like a cartoon like, character. Like hammer pants, exactly. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's the teacher of you got a Keenan hole in the back for easy access. <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's it's very. I mean, it's so strange. It's it's a miracle that any of us do ever have the same references. Yeah. for yeah. like what we know and think and feel and remember, which is kind of the beautiful thing about comedy. The the comedy of like, hey, y'all y'all remember Nintendo? You know, yeah. like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I do remember Nintendo. That, that nostalgic connection almost one of my favorite things to do these days is like for you know last night i had a joke about Mad Men, and i'll ask it was only like you know Mad Men was on 10 years ago yeah uh and i watched it and a lot of people watched it and a lot of people didn't watch it probably more people it was on amc which isn't like your main channel you yeah know, your, your standard but like i thought at least everyone's heard of it right yeah. and then i reached a point where i did a show and like people didn't react and i was like wait c- clap your hands if you have not heard of the tv show mad men and it was like 30 percent of this audience in kansas city had, had not heard of it heard of it and like 30 yeah. percent of them had heard of it but not seen it and 30 percent had seen it and 10 percent uh didn't doesn't make any sense yeah um uh yeah give or take and who knows the polling yeah. but um and i was like wow and i was like that's incredible and then i was like wait I guess that's regular because the farther away you get from a thing in time and space, like uh-huh. I, I have a joke I do sometimes now about Sidney Poitier, yeah. who is by some measures, you know, by relative measures, a famous actor well, that when I was a child and my today mom in history, me, today in history, April third, you know, I think it's the 13th. Yeah. He, uh, won his first uh award is that true i swear to god i looked at it today that's in, and that that's bizarre for the prep for the show there was another thing that we brought up that was also uh another do you know what, connected to the day in history do you know what i say but when, I didn't thing, bring it when up. coincidences like that happen it's uh there is a universe yeah, yeah and it's those patterns i mean yeah. but yeah so the reason i bring him up is because when i was a kid i remember my mom and i tell this as a joke my mom asked me do you like you know Sydney Poitier? And yeah. I was like, I do not know Sydney Poitier. And she's like, you know, from To Sir with Love. I'm like, this is not. Uh, that was not, her person, I'm though. Eight. Yeah, that. That, yeah. For, I mean, she grew up like clearly with uh, an experience. And like, yeah. now, on the flip side, ten years ago, my girlfriend was working a, at a department store, like a big in the fine jewelry department, and Madonna was coming into the store to do an event because she was releasing a skincare line. And there was somebody who were, everyone was excited except for one person who was legit a 20 something year old person 10 years ago who was like, who is Madonna? No clue. And like, to, I mean, to this day, I mean, as this podcast may be out for years, uh, we're recording this in 2024 and it would be like saying, who is Beyonce? Who right. is Swift, Tom or... Cruise? Yeah. Who is Taylor Swift? 100%. Also, uh, I mean, I had one of those at, uh, as a counselor at summer camp when the kids had no clue who Weird Al was. Oh my God. And I was like, but you guys are teenagers. You're supposed to know every Weird Al song. Do you know... It's not downloaded on your iPod? Do you want to know what Weird Al has in common with Madonna? That's a cool trivia fact. I have to know. I'll tell you... Well, Dylan's maybe got a guess. I don't know. Uh, I'll give you... <laughs> so it's Madonna, Weird Al, Michael Jackson, 
and U2, I think. Is it the We Are the World? No. And uh, possibly the Beatles, but I think it's just those four. U2, Madonna, Weird Al, and uh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. The, the, the fuck, what's the statue with all the presents on it? <laughs> Mount Rushmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been it's funny the Mount Rushmore of, yeah, you um, nailed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pop. Mount Rushmore of white people is what I was going to say. <laughs> the, the 1980s, the 1990s, the 2000s, and the 20 teens, they each had a number one album, I believe. Okay, that makes uh, sense. And like in four, over four decades, yeah. they, they were the Continued. number one. They're the wow. only four. Yeah. Yeah, I, the, and there was one other who I hadn't heard of who was like a British artist of some yeah, kind. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and I don't know if I hope they hope they keep it going for the twenty twenties. Seriously, but Weird Al, my God, I saw him. He might f- live. Wow. At, at, it was the final date of his tour. Emo Phillips opening for Weird Al <laughs> at Carnegie Hall, October. 29th, I think. Uh, October of 2022, I believe it was. I, maybe and this is a hot take, but I don't like Emo Phillips with short hair. You don't like him with short hair? Yeah. Well, he, his hair is longer again. Good. Um, I, that, uh, the, it's interesting because the first time I ever saw Emo Phillips, uh, I, I came across his jokes in writing. Now yeah. now I'm, I'm so grateful I've met him and worked with him and we are... That's awesome. Friends, like yeah. we have socialized, and yeah. and he's like, I mean, he is he is a Mount Rushmore of comedy. One hundred percent. Like, been doing it since the seventies, and is so like one a of, pioneer. Like, also, what he does, like that oh, type of like absolutely odd, yeah, yeah I like, guess way of performing. Yeah, the way that <laughs> you know people will look at Mitch Hedberg and be like, is he kind of doing what Stephen Wright is doing? And yeah, Mitch totally. Hedberg's like, he's like, you know, if you put, I think I, he says like, if you put. Potato made potato chips and you put them in a can. Of course, you're gonna get compared to Pringles. But what if you put them in a bag, man? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and yeah, like they're they're creating all of these, you know, wonderful, you know, beautiful artists are creating like these mathematically perfect, like just single line jokes. And yeah. So I I first came across emo in a book, just like a book of jokes. Oh I was really? Like, these are per- I just read read a joke that's like, oh my god, like uh, the. People say against the if they're against the death penalty, they say yeah it makes the government into a murderer. But what about life imprisonment? Makes the government into a gay dungeon master. You know? <laughs> and I was like, this is incredible. And I like I just all through the book there were just like these perfect one line. I feel like that's not even like my favorite joke of his, but I'm like it's joke logic is pure, you know. Yeah. And so I just I bought an album of his. I bought us this is like you know the early 2000s probably. I bought a CD, mm-hmm. maybe E equals M O squared, or just maybe his self titled Emo Phillips, whatever it was. He had short hair on the cover, and I'm like, yeah. cool. And I listened to it, and I'm like, his voice. Oh my god! Like I didn't. I I was like surprised. Yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember the very first time, like we worked <laughs> together in probably like 2007 or eight at this. It was called the Alternative Comedy Festival in Boston, and uh, Micah Sherman and I, who I, who have did musical comedy together, we were hosting the shows, and Emo was headlining the show uh, at one of the shows, and got to work with him. And th- there's so many stories now sprouting from this, but we asked him, "How would you like to be introduced?" And he said, "Let me think about it." And he went into his dressing room, and he came out 20 minutes later with. It looked like he had torn up a uh, a cardboard box and into like nine or uh, ten, twelve pieces, and on each one had written down one line of his introduction. And Mike, I don't, I don't remember all of them, but they were all informational and perfect jokes. Like on one, the only one that I remember is it just said, "He is considered by many," and that was it. You know. <laughs> And so we, it was incredible. And so that's, after, a, that's I remember, wild. Yeah, I like, we, ex- I guess I we must have gotten his contact info or like, you know, we followed each other on social media or whatever it might have been at the time. And I remember asking him when I moved to New York in 2008. So it must have been before, it was before that, that this happened. And I saw that he was going to be headlining a comedy club in New York called Comics, which isn't there anymore. And I like reached out to him and asked him if I could open for him. And initially he said, no, usually the club does whatever, whatever yeah. it was. But then, uh, I eventually got a voice message. Like he called and left me a message and I'm not going to do the, uh, the justice voice, to the but impression, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he was like, sure, you can open, you know, like, yeah, 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 um, yeah. like I checked and it sounds and, like a wizard just called you. Yeah. It was, <laughs> and I, I, I don't know if I still have it, but I kept it for as long as I could on that phone. And just, it was an honor, you know, just to man, he's so the best. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I forget why we started talking about him. <laughs> 
But the uh, point is, Emo Phillips is good. Yes. Man, if you listen to his all, all his albums, but also, man, look at the track listings. I forget which album it is. One of them, oh my God. It's like, the first track is called like, introduction or something something normal and then the second track is called like track one yeah. uh, uh, and then the second track is or the third track is called track two yeah and then like the fourth track is called a little more track two that i just found like and every like 16 17 it's jokes tracks, upon jokes yeah, yeah it's like you and you can just you can do that yeah like nobody do you know that there's a they might be giants album that is a, a hidden track before the album starts no. it's i think it's it's either Factory Showroom or Miscellaneous Tea. I think it's Factory Showroom, which, but it's one of those two. Where it and you know, hidden tracks we know about them. Yeah. Now they're not hidden anymore. Like yeah. the, the final track is seventeen minutes long, but the song ends after three minutes. What's going on? Like uh, we Prince get it. Yeah. And the hyena, their top song is hidden track, and that's oh. what it's called with asterisks. By and uh, yeah. But I was I was a fan of They Might Be Giants since my teen years, and I was I think probably for decades didn't know. That there was an extra song. Yeah. That if you just start the album and then put rewind. What? It, it rewinds to before. Uh, and I don't know if it works online, but I did it with my physical Track negative CD. one. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's sick. I didn't even know you could do that. I mean, obviously you can throw yeah. on the yeah. as well. I do like it when, because uh, I so I'm a big fan of punk, and I feel like they would they do a lot of that mocking stuff, almost like parody, but like they'll make fun of how they track list songs or whatever. And like uh, one a band called Dads has a song called uh, "I Hate Songs with the Word Beach in the Title," ha! and then the next song is "Let's Go to the Beach." Yeah, uh, and, and also I, the one Le "I Hate Songs with the Word Beach in the Title" has the word "beach" in the title as well. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love good. that kind of stuff. I, I also feel like you don't even notice it unless you look at the thing. Mm -hmm. You yeah. had one in because uh, I did a little bit of a dive, and <sighs> one of your it was Thoreau, 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 Thoreau. Yeah, you know, there's a band I like called There, 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 and it's just mm. all the different. Yeah. There's yeah. written that, out. That is a song from my not specifically only comedy album. Many, yeah. Many musics. Yeah. I listened a little bit. Oh, thank it you. It was man. pretty good. Thank you. I do like, I love. This I, compliment I, is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think that, uh, oh, I remember a whole thing. You were talking about impressions. I've been practicing an impression. But oh. um, I think music is like. It's wild how it's like a it's a different type of spell that comedy is mm. like what it does to people and how people can enjoy it and stuff. It's so different. I think and I think that comedy can be like that also, but yeah, it's a spectrum of yeah. because when I mean, there's a buddy of mine named Dylan Brody. He's a fantastic comedian and storyteller in L.A. and he brother of Stephen. Yeah. Brody. Uh, yeah, Stephen Brody Stevens. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're they're brother, brothers by the middle name. Yeah, <laughs> they're bros. If you just take the first part of the word Brody, um, yeah, they're they're you know bros from another D. Um, <laughs> that actually ended up being Worth more it. meaningful than it turned out. Okay, so <laughs> Dylan Brody, I, I'm gonna paraphrase, but he introduced this comp concept to me that jokes are like magic spells. They're like incantations that if you don't have all the ingredients yeah. and you don't pronounce the words in the exact order with the precise rhythm, then the spell doesn't work. 100%. It, and, and it's like ingredients and how we all have the same ingredients to work with. Exactly. And, and moreover, I do think that like every comedian has, you know, there's, I think there's a range of like the two, the form and function again, like that sometimes Comedy is just about being funny and it doesn't have to mean anything. Yeah. And then some like like Dave Attell, new special. Love it. Love yeah. it. And if you're like, what does Dave Attell believe? You yeah, know? He, totally. What what does he and I, I would I would think I mean you can see that his kind heart does shine through. In part, if you also like I went back and listened to Skanks for the Memories, his first album from like 2007. Yeah. And like there's words on there that he is actively not saying today yeah. like there's like you know r words and m words totally. and like that were culturally speaking like envelope pushing them that have gone now that beyond that that he's like yeah i mean it really seems he's very thoughtful he's very intelligent yeah and he cares he cares not only about like the structure and like the the quality of the joke but also he cares about the audience and like his 
it really truly could be enjoyed by like people across the political spectrum as long as you're fine with like jizz you know yeah, like yeah. but yeah. like 100 percent. like it's I, like he stands for comedy he yeah. stands for jokes yes and that's what the core of and and so he is all about the I, I'm, not, I'm not even sure wh whether it is the form or the function. I guess it is the form. He's like the form of comedy. It's like you, what what is there? What is yeah. the function? I mean, only laughter, yeah. only joy. Whereas like somebody, you know, like Maria Bamford or Kamau Bell or Doug Stanhope or Sarah Silverman, like when they're doing, the, or Aparna, you know, uh, that their material is not just to, not only to be funny or Gary Goldman, you know, like these are masters of like who they are sure. and they have messages like yeah, yeah, yeah. messages that are like delivered through yeah. this beautiful system it's of comedy. Like uh, Carlin, I feel like obviously like where he started to where he ended. And, yeah. and he, Carlin, I think is a perfect example of even going farther in like farther away from the has to be funny direction 100% there's like in his 90 minute specials there's like probably 45 minutes to 75 minutes of like hard laughs depending on the special yeah and there's like you know i'd say 20 to 50 percent of some of those albums that like in the past i'd be like i could go through this and do like a cut and be like you could have like wall to wall laughs for a minute george you know <laughs> but clearly he was doing exactly what he wanted and sometimes it's like beat poetry sometimes yeah. it's slam poetry sometimes it's like like a rant he's like this is what i want to say and it's and like a truism like yeah. it's like an altruistic statement where he's actually saying something way deeper than just this yeah. is a funny satirical observation yeah. and so it's, for him it's either going to be it's completely meaningful or it's pussy farts, yeah, you know, yeah. or somewhere <laughs> in between. That's like pussy so farts true. is his David Hell end of the spectrum. Like he yeah. he does it all, and so it's it's really it's really cool and and beautiful. And I forget why we started talking about it. <laughs> uh, the idea of uh, having like a something deeper um, behind your jokes. Oh, and music, yes, and getting music, to yeah. yes, the that, spell that's the, the, the spell, spell that, that is cast, puts you out. Yeah, yes. Yes. and that. So yeah, every comedian has, uh, so even the comedians who, yeah, this is, thank you so much. We're back. We're back. Yeah. Back on track. <laughs> so every, even the comedians that are only like, like that are focusing more, more like the Carlin, more like I'm getting this message across. Yeah. Like even they have a rhythm uh, a and cadence. like, yeah, a cadence and like a way that the jokes go. Yeah. Like whether it's different every night or yeah. whether it settles into a groove uh, that is like, it's musical. It's 100%. like every, every sound is a note. Every, yeah. every, and you can listen to some voices talk, listening to emo Phillips talk about capitalism might be a little weird if it wasn't, a punchline coming constantly. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? If it was just that really long, I, I feel like uh, Jake DePizza, a dude here in the comedy scene, he described it as, because his joke delivery is very slow and he allows every word to Get hit. to it, man. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, and it works, right? It doesn't work for me. Uh, it really does work for him and he does, describes it as every comedian has like an instrument. And you got to know how your instrument should be played. Every comedian is an instrument. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, and we're all, but we're, we're basically, it's like learning how to play an instrument, except the instrument we're learning how to play is one that has never existed. Yeah. And we're also writing the music yeah. that has never existed. There's no sheet music. music. Or, or, yeah. yeah. It's yeah like there's they no say sheet music. In improv that, you know, doing an improv scene is like building the plane while you're flying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's building your instrument and creating a whole genre of music. Like maybe you can take from a genre. Maybe you're like, I'm observational or I'm political or I'm absurdist or I'm, you know, in whatever lineage. Yeah, but storytelling. Ultimately, yeah, you're... You're yourself, and yeah, 100% we're instruments. And your voice sounds better doing some things than others. Like, it, it just, it is weird that, like, the more you uh, try different things or you, f I guess, even just experiment, like, mm -hmm. you're going to find out what you're, where it hits the best and where it connects to people and what makes people enjoy it. The only the only disagreement I'll add is the exception to like that you can only like you know your voice only sounds good doing certain things is Reggie Watts. Mm. Reggie Watts, I've never heard his voice. He, it can go like the lowest to the high. Do you guys? Yeah. I just I didn't know that he did like a tiny desk concert for NPR yeah. Yeah. like maybe ten years ago, and I just watched it. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, more Reggie yeah. Watts. He is 
Uh, <laughs> he's like he is like the my girlfriend of comedy and music, you know, like the the best. And there's no way to like, oh, yeah, like he no who could do. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No. Beautiful. Like uh, uh, such a high talent. And he's doing fuck shit stack. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like uh, almost like. Well, and how you were saying like um, those uh, types of comedy fit better in certain spots and they make more sense to certain audiences and uh it's like you can't do certain uh music in the wrong place like you can't do opera in the club yeah, like yeah. i do think that like uh those kinds of set and settings it's interesting that you can't be like uh, a storyteller uh at a before a, a hip-hop show you know, you know what I mean? Like, you got to build some hype and get things exciting and yeah, be pretty yeah. theatrical. Are y'all you... ready to hear a story? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you know who I think could? I think you're right. And the only other exception I would say, you know who could do opera at the club is Reggie Watts. I think, yeah. uh, man. Yeah. Do you know, yeah. sometimes when I do psychedelics, I will, like, you know, thoughts and images and feelings and you know things will sort of like flow in and out of of my conscious experience and very often like reggie watts will pop up in there <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, he, yeah he's yeah he's that's exactly right or rory yeah. scovel or cape Berlant, you know like the various you know the psychedelic your your yeah. dmt aliens are just different comedians yeah. <laughs> i get harris whittles every once in a while like which is uh, always you know a bittersweet yeah. uh, like oh good he's still he's still Still in here, yeah. at least, you know. Yeah, that's so funny. I also, I mean, you've probably quoted 20 jokes. I love it. You're like a like a encyclopedia of, of comedy. Uh, you've really studied the, how you were talking about you can really study one thing and still not know oh, all yeah, of it. I'm, but. I'm looking through the, the comedy gap in the wall and yeah. like ripping it open and like <laughs> poking my head through and be like, there's a lot of comedy in here. Oh my God, what's happening to my face? Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, yeah. I love I'm, that. I I'm love that. I'm a, I don't think that I, I've never been diagnosed with o OCD, <laughs> but I think that, you know, I studied psychology in college. I put the college in psychology. Um, I, I didn't put it there. It was just there already, but I, I noticed it. And uh, I remember learning, a, learning about um, different disorders, you know, that are in the DSM and like, you know, it's not, it's not a binary. It's not a, an on off, like, they they might diagnose you or not diagnose you, yeah. but the reason you might get diagnosed with OCD, for example, in my understanding, which might be like now a decade, a couple decades old, but my understanding is like there's maybe nine uh, symptoms or yeah. nine diagnostic criteria that they'd be like, is this true for you? Is this true for you? And if you go through nine of them, like if you've got you know, anywhere between five and nine, yeah. they're like, then technically speaking, if you, you hit enough have, things on that spectrum, yeah. but if you've got four, like your life's not that much different than someone who has five. And the other thing that makes it, uh, like that makes something a disorder in my understanding, in my memory is that it adversely impacts your life or yeah. possibly the lives of others. Like, negative. like narcissism. Yeah. That mm -hmm. negatively, uh, it gets in the way of you living the way that you would want to live. Totally. So for me, the, I probably have a few things like a few notches on the obsessive compulsive spectrum, but not enough that it impacts my life adversely. In fact, it actually helps my life because I, you know, remember a lot of things. I write down a lot of things. I record a lot of things. I'm like, I was actually on the phone with my friend with the, the Zach Sherwin, uh, of previously, uh, a previous mention <laughs> on this very podcast on my way here. Cause we talk most days and there was something that I said in the conversation that he laughed at. And I'm like, Oh, I should record that in my digital recorder. I forgot to, but every once in a while I remember it. And I'm like, Oh, yep. It's the thing about giving advice. Got it. It's still in there. Yeah. And it, it does. It's that. almost like a checklist or yeah. like a set list of things that you've don't want to forget. And, I remember. I have, I have. Yeah. And it does also sometimes prevent me from being present as much yeah. when I'm like, oh yeah, in the moment, remember that thing. What did you just say? Never mind. I, well, oh yeah, I met a guy the other night, and all I heard was the, the second half of his name as uh, Ias, and I was like, oh, probably Tobias. And I was like, later it was nice to meet you, Tobias. He was like, it was Matthias, and yeah. I was like, great. <laughs> I was thinking something else during that first initial. And it wasn't until you tuned in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, until I said it wrong, and then he told me I was. Yeah. And I was like, great, good to learn. But yeah, so I do feel like 
uh, it, it really helps that but whatever the obsessive compulsive aspects of my personality are, they really help me remember dates and people's birthdays. They help me remember, you know, they help me get places yeah. on time. They usually help me keep track of things in my, my comedy notebooks. Yeah. And then yeah, in jokes that I've heard that I love, I well, love telling people. You've also, I mean, you've recorded five albums six albums you've recorded enough to where like you there's got to be a thousand jokes in that brain just of yours i mean so this to, to be honest i probably I, sometimes uh, so i did a dry bar comedy special taping in late 2021 and it came out about a year and a half later in like early 2023 to do that special, which is like, you know, I was, my aim was to do like a greatest, cleanest hits. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to like, there, I have a lot of albums that, you know, not all of them have come out as like specials. So I'm like, yeah. there's some jokes, especially because dry bar has to be a specific level of clean. So what my girlfriend and I did like on a road trip, uh, like the month before we listened back to, I think the five albums that I had put out at yeah. the time. And what is that like listening to your old stuff? It's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, so the, do you, did you enjoy it? I, I do. I yeah. love myself. And so uh, <laughs> that's I know how you know it's does. good yeah. jokes, though. That's a, it's good comedy when you laugh at your own stuff. And so here's a joke that I've never put on an album, but I may at some point, is that this is the truth, that I started doing comedy in about 2002, so more than 20 years ago. And I have like some audio or video records of like, you know, the sets that I, the earliest sets that I did, like a few, and yeah. they might be gone now. But I remember a year after starting, mm -hmm. I would like listen back to like, or look at one of the sets from right when I started. I was like, wow. I was like, I thought like at the time I was like, man, this is great. <laughs> and then I, a year later I'd be like, wow, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. Thank God I'm good now and then <laughs> a year every year later i look back and have yeah, that exact man. same mental conversation Moment, with myself yeah. and w which is great because it meant that every year i really thought that i was improving yeah and true so it's truly now i can listen back to an album i recorded the first one in 2009 and like i and think there's evolution like, that there's, proves evolution and to look back at a year yeah, and be like oh yeah oh i don't look like that i don't sound like that i don't do that yeah we are all shapeshifters you know yeah. and this particular album, I'm like, there's things on it that if I recorded it today, I wouldn't, I would say differently or not at all, you know, yeah. like things that I didn't think, like things that maybe societally were different or just I hadn't learned yet. Sure. And like, I don't want to say those things. Even in how that you were way. saying it with skanks. Yeah, for exactly. The memories. How, like, yeah, how? I don't even like saying skanks for the memories, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly the same thing. And so I listened back and I'm like, wow, I'm glad that. Uh, this isn't the one that like, you know, if I started today, I mean, it would be different. Yeah. And do you think though that that's important to have out there? That, like that's what you were back then. It's like a photograph. You're is. not going to wear the same clothes you would have worn in 2013. You wouldn't be at the same place. You would have meant all that kind of stuff. But I think it's important to like, cause like there's podcasts out there, even of us that I'm like, wow, we wouldn't have done that bit yeah. at this point. You know? Yeah. I mean, I will say this, uh, in short, I don't think it's. I don't think it's unimportant. Yeah. I, I think that given that that is, it is a, you know, a historical record. Exactly. I don't want to, I don't deny it. Yeah. Like I actually just saw a, a post on, I'll say Twitter, uh, from <laughs> Marcella Arguello and she is so funny. And the post was basically, uh, I, I don't know what bit she's talking about, but clearly she recently had a bunch of, uh, a new followers follow her and a, a large portion of them were trans. And so she must've done like, you know, a bit, uh, totally about, you know, be that was positive about being transgender or the trans yeah. community, uh, which is cool. And she said, so she tweeted something like, I, uh, I just want to let everyone know I used to be transphobic AF and uh, I've like grown a lot and learned a lot and I do my best to you know celebrate y'all in my comedy now totally. uh, but I just want to let you know that this is the journey that I have been on and maybe I'm just saying this to like let everyone know it's real easy to stop being transphobic just do it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and I was like that's really awesome and or to even be able to call yourself out yeah. you know that's that takes I'm really glad that uh, I mean if for uh, you know it often i remember seeing like paul f tompkins is one of my favorites like in an interview years and years ago somebody was asking him a question that comedians get asked so much like don't you think it's hard to not be able to say the things that you could say before yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like 
I mean, if you want to say the same things that you want, this is paraphrasing. If you want to say the same things now that you were saying in the 80s, I feel like you're a dinosaur yeah. and you're not growing and learning and changing. Yeah. And like, there is there is a joke that Colin Quinn has where he says like, yeah, just why I got into comedy, to wa- march lockstep with society, you know? <laughs> but also, yeah, like he's not out there saying the N-word. Right. Yeah. He's not out there like misgendering people yeah. on purpose as an asshole, like because you can, you know? Yeah. If, if, if you do things... Almost if you don't change or evolve, you're be, you're like Uncle Rico and Napoleon Dynamite. You're yeah. just like that old relic that's way too stuck in a... If you don't recognize that, like, things change. Yeah. I, I mean, that's literally the only thing... Like, there's a... a I was on a po- another podcast yesterday talking about this, but it's the truth. The Zen master, I think... I think it's Suzuki Roshi, but some Buddhist teacher was Dragon asked, Ball Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Dragon Ball mm-hmm. Zen master, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What this Zen master, this Buddhist teacher was asked, like, so there's so many things that the Buddha said. He said 84,000 different things. Can you kind of sum it up in one? And he was like, everything changes. And like, mic drop. That was it. Yeah. Like, it's, that's all that, that Change causes so inevitable. much yeah. suffering. The, all that, the things that cause suffering are the discrepancy between our idea of what things should be or were or what we wish and what they actually are in this moment. And there was one other thing that, what were we talking about moments ago? Before everything changes, <laughs> before everything did change. Oh yes, the uh, Paul of Tompkins, Marcella interview, my comedy. Oh yeah, this is a thing, a joke that I tell sometimes. I'm like, whoa, what did I want to say? Ah yes, me, 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 me. <laughs> um, I don't tell this. I haven't recorded this, but I sometimes will say in life and for real, like I mean, I mean for real in life and on stage, like I, I have done ayahuasca ceremonies, uh, like count countless times like i truly don't know how many times i think probably a double digit number uh like probably i mean i'm certainly not a single digit number would and, you would you do these are they uh are they in new york um i have done them the most of them in new york yeah like in with a peruvian guide Interesting. uh and then i've done them in peru with that same peruvian no guide. shit yeah that's crazy uh but then i've also done them with just some like you know people who are practiced in who have like worked with this Peruvian guide uh, and have done them like just a private small group. And usually it's like a larger group yeah, uh, or, you know, a s- small to lo- medium sized group anywhere from like, what is know. a small to medium? I'd say the, the smallest, I did like a private one at someone's home once with like four people. Uh, and there's, I, I don't think it's ever been less than four or five. I mean, it's never just been me and the guide, you know? Yeah. Uh, like four, it seems like yeah. something you want to have. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have the energy of a community. Uh, yeah. And, but I've done like some seven or eight. And then I'd say the first time I did it it was probably like 30 people. And like, I've heard of them being like in larger and larger groups, but the, the largest group I've had is between like 25, 35, but usually it's between, it could be a dozen is nice or maybe two dozen. But, uh, so sometimes people, and I'm, you know, I'm an advocate for it. If it, you know, do some research, if you're interested, like it's not right for everyone. Everyone's brain chemistry actually can't handle it. So it's good to know, uh, you know, do, I, I don't just say blindly do drugs, do yeah. research and then do <laughs> drugs. But the, the joke that I say sometimes is, but when people are worried, they're like, what if I do this and I'm changed forever? I'm like, well, what if you don't do it? And you never change. Yeah, you what, and you're the, the same, same forever. Like yeah. it's not possible. Like there's no there's no way to be the same forever. But we we want to hold on to we want to hold on to the good things. But the good things. The the worst case scenario is you blossom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's like a blooming onion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So listening back to like those early albums, the the other thing that is cool is like I truly have. I don't remember everything that I wrote. I don't remember everything that I recorded. I don't remember everything that I thought at a time was like the best, most important thing to say. (laughs) Worth putting on record. I'll be like, I didn't even remember that I did that. Yeah. 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 That's good. It's fun because it's like, it's a different guy. Oh, 100%. And I think it's important to record that so you can listen to that. 
Yes. You know, says the guy who doesn't record his <laughs> sets. <laughs> yeah, well, let, let me, let me I'm tell you terrible this. about recording sets. <laughs> my, I have a buddy. That is hilarious, actually. Yeah. As somebody does as many podcasts as I do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll record spoke like just random word thoughts, <laughs> but I won't record the actual thing I try to craft. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Well, can, right. can think about it as you're recording a, point. a new podcast every time you do a set, and the podcast is called Random Word Thoughts. There yeah. you go. Now you can my first it. album. <laughs> yeah. I, have a, I have a buddy. Matt D, Random very funny comedians. Uh, I remember having a conversation with him. I think he probably has a comedy album out now. But at the time, he, ha uh, he had an hour of jokes that are great. And I was like, are you going to record them as an album? And he's like, I don't know, because I think that this is just like the first hour of jokes that I think are good. But probably like the out this is going to like pale in comparison to the hour that I might write in a year. And I was like, yeah. yeah. And then that'll pale in comparison. He's like, you know, talks himself out of like, every one is not going to be as good. And so my idea for him was, Hey, record every hour. Mm -hmm. Don't release them, just record them. Yeah. And then if at a point after, you know, I don't know, your 70th hour, <laughs> you're 90 years old and you're like, wait, this one's as long as they keep getting better and better, yeah. don't release them because yeah. you're not at the top yet. But once you get to one <laughs> that you're like, well, this one's not as good as the last one, then be like, release, release the, the last one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the, uh, do you know this Calvin We've and peaked. Hobbes? The, do you guys read Calvin and Hobbes? I like, have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like. I have a life syllabus. I don't recommend something to many things to everyone, but I recommend Calvin and Hobbes. Like I don't recommend ayahuasca to everyone, but I recommend Calvin and Hobbes <laughs> to everyone. In that way, Calvin and Hobbes is better than psychedelics. Um, <laughs> it's a trip. And there's one where they're like driving and they go over a bridge and there's like a sign that says, you know, weight limit two tons or whatever. And Calvin asks, how do they know? what the weight limit is and his father says oh when they're building the bridge they build the bridge and then they start driving bigger and bigger trucks over it and then once the bridge collapses then they they weigh the last truck and then they rebuild the bridge and that's the weight limit yeah. and i was like that's yeah that's the way that i'm like that's how you should make your album you yeah. know <laughs> until your like comedy can't handle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you break the bridge. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I uh I do think that like it probably forces you to to write more if you do burn a lot, right? Yeah. If you if you record it. A lot of bridges. On. Yeah. You gotta yeah. build a lot more bridges. You gotta and, you gotta burn them to bur build them, dude. I also think that like <laughs> Just leave them in flames. Yeah. It's like uh the the greats I feel like well it's like uh, comparing it back to music again, like there's bands that you only know their first album. And then everything else was just kind of like blah, 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 whatever. Or they had one good hit or whatever. It is interesting that I do think the best comedians get better as they keep going. I you agree. know what I mean? Yeah. As, like, long, as long as you continue to evolve like, you know, strive for that growth. Like, do you know this? There's a thing that I heard of called rapid prototyping. Hmm. And I recently, I follow this woman on Substack. Uh, and her first name is Kelsey. And she wrote a book a memoir about being a soccer player when she was younger. And I forget, uh, Kelsey Irvick. I did it. Uh, I think that's her name. And she shared. Your OCD is showing. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I, I want to, uh, my obsessive citation disorder. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and she shared and quoted, and I don't remember who it was that she quoted, but this concept. I'd heard the concept before, but I didn't know. Uh, who had originated it or where had it had come from. But the way that I heard of it, it was called rapid prototyping. And it was like, imagine, uh, or not even imagine, I think they could, they did at one point take a class, uh, a ceramics class. And they're like, you're going to make pottery, everyone. And they split the class into two. And they said, over here, everyone, for the time, for the entire time, you're going to work on one, each, each of you is going to try to make the best pot that you can make, the best one piece of, of pottery. And then in that same amount of time, this group over here, you're going to try to make as many quality. You're going to make as much quantity, as many pots as you can yeah. in that same amount of time. And clearly that when they started out, their first pots weren't as good as the ones that were being made carefully over here. But by the end of the time period, they were make the quantity group was making pots that were consistently better than the one that the other group was making. And that is why I think Seinfeld should do more writing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know. but sincerely, it really does feel like yeah. Seinfeld is, I mean, he writes new jokes, but he is 
crafting. He is working on, he's not make, throwing out an hour and doing a new hour no. every year. Yeah. And there are people that are doing that and potentially getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. I do think that's the thing. Is yes. like, it, it's like uh, people's first albums. Uh, there are people that you look back and you're like, wow, that was a crazy album. But if you do get better and you do refine, it's like a... Like a sword, where you know, if you use it more and more often, and you sharpen it more and more often, it's only going to get stronger. And here's here's my uh, debut, uh, you know, this exclusive thought that I hadn't really thought of right now. And I, beep, in beep, fact, beep, 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 I'm, beep, yeah, I'm going to pull out out of my pocket my car keys, which I don't <laughs> need, but they're just in the way of my <laughs> digital recorder. That I, I'm like, this is an idea. This is one of those moments. Yeah, I want I want to capture this, and by the time I get it, I've forgotten it. Okay, so. Uh, with music, the, the thing that you said earlier, uh, I like the idea that the first album might be the most popular, might be the one that everyone thinks is the best. Yeah. And that my theory, here's my prediction or my, what is it? My, yeah, I guess theory will do, um, is that either the two options that the band has is to put out music that sounds like the music that they already put out or put out music that sounds different than the music that they already put out and so Risk. for some people right some bands will experiment and they might be way happier with the music that they're doing 10 years later 20 years later and they're sick of their first album and don't want to play it except as an encore at yeah. their show that the people are like but you gotta you know like i love that you called it a theory because this is literally a hybrid this hybrid theory it's it's lincoln park's first album it's it's lincoln park getting all their fans and then each album they try to get further away from their fans that they yeah got their first album and they're like no we're not those same people or then there's tool and it's just like every album is exactly the same album yeah and that's so, the yeah the other side of that yeah. and so some people might like it but you can definitely in that case if you're comparing yeah if you're comparing an album that's the same kind of music as the first one you'll be like the first one's better mm -hmm. because it's innovative. It's mm -hmm. original. Like maybe they do it a little better now, but they're like, the, yeah. you're just doing the same thing. So I like the first one better with the newer stuff. Yeah. People might just, if you love the first thing, yeah. then you might not love the later thing. But right? I think that nobody would look at Led Zeppelin four and be like, Led Zeppelin one is the masterpiece mm -hmm. when obviously they got better and better every yeah. album. I mean, Bowie was famous for that. Um, I think that like, it, mastering the craft it, it's harder to it is interesting because like you know you look like i'm a huge green day fan and like you look at their first three albums and those are where all of their best songs are like as soon as they get more and more money they lose their we're not smoking pot and jerking off uh -huh. every day instead yeah. we have children and we have a family and we want to be on the radio it's a completely different type of music and yeah. Also, though, I mean, there is something to, like, how old are you? 27. Uh, so that's interesting. When do you think you first started listening to Green Day? I think 13, 14. Yeah. That. And so that, there is a, the phenomenon like that because you're a teenager and you're, you're becoming an adult and your brain is literally forming, you know, forming. Like, yeah. new connections. Figuring. Like, all, it's almost a guarantee that everyone thinks that the music that they heard in their adolescence is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so really is. if yeah. you first heard their dad rock now when you were 13, <laughs> you might think that, I don't know any of those songs, but yeah. you might nobody, think. Nobody uh, that grew up with Van Halen is like, uh, Sammy Hagar came yeah. in and saved the band. <laughs> unless, I mean, unless they're like 12 when he came around. Yeah, I mean, true. Yeah. Also, like, I haven't listened to much Van Halen, but... When I was a teenager, they were on uh, Something Has Fallen, There Is Noise, <laughs> Everything's Okay. I hope so. Sounds like it was a phone. It sounded like a phone. Yeah, yep. uh, yeah. you know, just a, the most expensive piece of equipment. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, man, my phone stopped working yesterday. We don't have to. It's doing fine now. Everything that's, I'm, that is Every stressful. day is a blessing that your phone is working. Um, <laughs> but in my teenage years, I was like, that's when I started really listening to music and like watching MTV. Yeah. And so I think the Sammy Hagar like uh, years were it was like the mid 90s yeah and so that's like i haven't really done a deep dive back through so i'm like yeah van halen i like them <laughs> they're good yeah. you know and who knows what i'll think if i listen to the quote-unquote better because also, yeah like, no that's super true it's like when you experience it that's what you i mean it's like when you listen to a, a cover first yeah and then yes. you listen to the original and you're like 
What the fuck? You know, you know what song? I prefer Deftone Simple Man over Leonard Skinner's Simple Man. Uh, do you know, I love, I, I love when they're it's both. A hot take. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I know nothing about either of those. And yeah, uh, yeah but it's not, I'm glad that you love what you love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the song, I love when they are totally different and you can love them both mm -hmm. because yeah. they're so different. And the one for me for that is uh, Little Help From My Friends. Okay. Like I, I first heard The Wonder Years uh, theme song yeah. when I was growing up and it was the Joe Cocker version. And then I think I probably... Like the maybe I like the Beatles one b better, but the other one is like more in a style. Like they're both wonderful, yeah. yeah, and they're totally different. It's like you didn't hear what the lyrics were, you didn't even know they were the same song. Yeah. One hundred percent. I hate it when they're too similar. Yeah. Have a little help from my society of Quakers, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Quaker. The original lyrics, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you know that uh, I, I consider myself something of a joke rocker or a joke rocker? Yeah, and <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be a good name for a Weird Al cover song of <laughs> Joe Crocker. Yeah. In fact, uh, it's go it's going in right now, along with everything else that I haven't forgotten yet. Joe Crocker, joke rocker, and uh, from earlier, uh, Calvin and Hobbes <laughs> is better than Ayahuasca because I recommend it to everyone. And here's a, a debut for you guys from the phone call with Zach. I was talking about. Uh, I used to give people advice all the time, like, you know, just as a, I feel like it's not uncommon, but like if people that weren't asking for advice, people would just like share something with me and I'd be like, you know what you should do? Yeah. And like, but very few people told me, uh, Hey, don't do that. Yeah. They'd probably just stopped hanging out with me, you yeah. know, like, oh, hey, I'm going to give myself some advice, little less mic time, you yeah. know? Uh, and that's, uh, I love, it's, it's such an, a, a newer thing for me that I'm like giving, I'm like. Any advice I have, I'm going to give it to myself. And if you want it, I'll offer it to you. Yeah. Uh, if you ask me what you think I should do, like then absolutely. But there's uh, there's different modalities of when people come to you for like to share an issue, yeah. which uh, I'll, I'll give you one more Zachism from my, my life and friendship with Zach Sherwin. We call uh, sharing in, uh, a problem with each other rumpelstiltskinning oh, yeah. uh, in the spirit of, you know, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the fairy tale, uh, wherein <laughs> the guy's name was Rumpelstiltskin, yeah. but nobody knew it. And his power was dissipated once his name was known and stated yeah. in the same way that like, if you are uh, in recovery and you go to Alcoholics Anonymous and you're like, my name is blank and I am an alcoholic, you are naming the problem. You are rumpelstiltskinning it and therefore depriving Addressing it, it. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. its, of at least some of its power. And then there's more to do. But uh, yeah, so in, uh, I just rumple still skins my, uh, my concern that I wasn't gonna, uh, remember everything that I yes. just recorded. Took care of it. But yeah. We're there. Addressed it. That's, yeah. I like that actually. Yeah. I like also having coat like phrases inside of a friendship that only that person knows. You want, you want to know, uh, here's a, a term that's not only from our friendship, but a term for what having terms within your friendship is mm -hmm. it's called a familect it's, it's like made of family and dialect it's mm. like a dialect that exists you know dialects are spoken by smaller populations than speak you know necessarily the fuller language yeah. uh but and in fact we, we don't have to go deeper into the the linguistics hole here uh but uh <laughs> the the word dialect and language in fact don't have meanings that are really all that distinct because sometimes we refer to cantonese and mandarin as dialects of chinese when in fact yeah. they are wholly separate languages that if you speak one you don't understand the other yeah, one necessarily yeah. and also when i learned this in my linguistic studies i was i understood that uh serbo croatian was a language and bosnian was a language uh but they were only called languages by virtue of the fact that they were spoken in different countries mm. bosnia is a country that speaks bosnian serbo croatia is a, a country that speaks serbian croatian or serbo croatian whatever it is but those two languages were as similar as british english and american english <laughs> like you could absolutely understand yeah. each other maybe yeah. some like slang or different terms for certain things they like, just what's a so... lorry you know yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so the word dialect and language themselves are not as distinct as like the language is big and the dialect is small. Yeah. But this is all to say- It's not that, like an yeah, accent. A familect is a, a, lo a, f a localized dialect that exists only within, you know, a family or a friendship or a small group of people yeah. that have, you know, but essentially like inside jokes that yeah. make sense as communication. Mm -hmm. Damn. And you-, you uh, I think uh, so. Croatians, you said that uh, those are in the water. 
Uh, yes, uh, that's uh, you. You did a great job. Cro- <laughs> Croatian does sound like crustacean. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost too far, but uh, I, it was one of those stretches. Yeah. In the here's the thing I. I'll, I'm going to tell you a thing I like about Seinfeld and a thing I like about Nick Vatterat about Seinfeld. Okay. <laughs> so Seinfeld, I mean, he is, I feel like he's almost like in the place of like Freud, you know, what Freud is to uh, psychology, psychology yeah, yeah, like yeah. Seinfeld, you know, Seinfeld and Carlin. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, like you can't, they're on the Mount Rushmore of like, at least historically, like they did something. You yeah. Know? And I remember listening to like, I think it was an on comedy interview with Seinfeld where he was talking about the goal of a comedian to write a joke is to, you're essentially getting the audience to leap off a cliff and you want them to land exactly where the other side is. And like they're leaping off, (laughs) they're leaping off where the setup is and they're landing where the punchline is. And he's like, if it's too far, if the punchline's too far, then they don't make it. And if the punchline's too near, it's not exciting. Yeah. It's like a a beautiful, perfect analogy. And it's like the, the job and purpose of the comedian to figure out exactly with help from various audiences, be like, what's the perfect distance? What's the perfect set of ingredient words to make this magic spell happen. I've heard Seinfeld, yeah, he descri- or uh, he's described it as a train passing by, mm. and you have to catch that perfect moment on that spot ah. in the train, or yeah. else, and like... Or else you die. The train's yeah. going by, yeah, yeah, and you can totally miss it, or you yeah. can totally catch it. Mm. Also, do y'all know Nick Vatterat? <laughs> y- oh, yes. Nick Vatterat is everyone, so check out Zach Sherwin watch go to Zach Sherwin's YouTube check out the crossword show I'm doing plugs for everyone that's Zach-isms. not me yeah Zach yeah Zach Sherwin has a show called the crossword show which is one of the most beautiful pieces of performance creative art that I've ever seen it's funny it's music it's a crossword puzzle gets solved on stage by uh, guest comedians it's incredible so check out Zach Sherwin and the crossword wow. show crosswordshow.com sometimes he's like go to crosswordshow.com which is crosswordshow.com and uh <laughs> Um, <clears throat> crosswords, how? Um, so Nick Vatterot, stand-up comedian, one of the funniest people I've ever met right as back. well. Uh, okay, well, then I'll tell you more about Nick Vatterot right after this. Um, Nick, I'll, I'll save the, the Seinfeld yeah. uh, Nick Vatterot joke after uh, our, ge- our guest host returns. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, I, I'm the host, he's the guest yeah, now. It's it's like somebody left we a Zoom meeting, they made yeah. me host. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So Nick Vatterat, his first album is called For Amusement Only, Mm -hmm. and it is one of the most beautiful, hilarious pieces of comedy that I've ever heard. I think his newest special is called Disingenuous, and I think it's on Amazon or other places, or look for Nick Vatterat and watch watch his late night shows. He is just got, here's a joke that I, here's a real life story about Nick that uh, I was at lunch with a friend and uh, a friend who's not a comedian, and I was like, do you know Nick Vatterat? And they were like, I don't. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, you have to check out Nick Vatterat. He is like this super funny weirdo. Yeah. And then my friend gets like a really serious look on her face. And she like sort of reaches out to touch my arm. And she's like, Mike. And I was like, oh, I, I know that I'm a weirdo also. And she was like, thank God. I don't. <laughs> she's like worried that she would have to tell me yeah. that I might. I'm like, I'm out here calling people weirdos. Yeah. And I'm a weirdo. Okay. He's back. Ready to hear my favorite. This is one of my favorite things that Nick Vatterat has ever said. It was a, like a tweet years ago. And it was basically, I'm paraphrasing, but here's the, uh, the, the nut of it. The, he's like. Here's my two favorite things, my two favorite Seinfeld quotes, my two favorite things that Seinfeld has ever said. Number one, the audience is always right. Number two, I don't perform at colleges anymore because they're too PC. <laughs> God. I, and I, I, lo- I love Seinfeld, I, and I love, you know, it's, it's funny. It's such a funny, yeah. 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 And I love... Uh, I mean, there's so many things to love about the show Seinfeld and like, I mean, Seinfeld has done so, so many, uh, comedians future have, you know, been built on the, well, like, yeah, he exactly. created something, yeah. he created something. Re- Do you guys know this? I forget whose joke. I, I don't know if I ever learned whose joke this is. So I'm out there. Please, if you know whose joke this is, please let me know. But it's like, what's the difference between Seinfeld and Paul Reiser? It's, uh, who are these people versus <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> yeah, the, just the voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so fun. It, well, but that's the instrument. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, that's, yeah. That's like uh, the difference between uh, Jimi Hendrix and any other guitarist. 
It's like he and just me, found yeah. that. <laughs> Do you know that my mom uh, list, started listening to Taylor Swift a couple years ago? And uh, she's when a Swifty? She is a, she's Swifty a Swifty over now. 50? Though, yeah, I think. How did you know how old my mom was? I'm 45. <laughs> and um, my mom, when she first listened to it, she's like, this is, she's like, I love it. And she said, Mike, this reminds, you know, this reminds me of, this reminds me of your music. Oh, wow. <laughs> my mom, I, I, Taylor Swift reminds my mom of me. That's, that's a good mom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's she, so true. She's, yeah. She loves me. Almost anything she loves will remind her of me. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the, uh, the star in all of the songs. It's true. <laughs> I mean, haters gonna hate, but not my mom, you know? <laughs> Harter's gonna heart. Yeah. Harter's gonna heart, yeah. I, uh, I, I haven't even began to dive into the, the Swifty discography, but I like to think that I'm holding on to it. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. way I could dive in at Keep some point. Keep it for later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Next time you have a broken heart. Yeah. So, you know, I, I will tell you this. I'm not I'm not saying that you have to start listening immediately because it does sound like you have other things in your life that bring you joy. <laughs> then you're not only like denying yourself the potential future joy of going through the entirety of Taylor Swift's discography, which real quick, uh, I want to tell you two two things now. One that I thought of on the way to this, which is uh, I'll leave you with a Todd Barry joke uh, about uh, box sets. But first, this is the the real meaningful point. When I was a kid, I went to like the comic book store every Wednesday for a while, like in my teen years, and I'd buy a stack of comics, like maybe 10, 20 bucks on comics, uh, come home with 10 to 20 comics, uh, depending on what they cost at the time. And, uh, and I'd put them in order, and the order that I put them in to read them was I, the ones that I was most excited about, I put at the bottom. And I'd go through... Whoa. I'd read, I'd, I'd, because I'd want to have it be like, you know, the headliner at the yeah, end. The you know? dessert. Like, yeah, have have the best tasting thing uh -huh. be the, the final taste. You want it to go mouth. all uphill. Uh, yeah. And uh, it seems interesting that it, uphill and down, it's an uphill battle. That's I not know, good. That is it's so all silly, downhill from here. That's no good. You just want to be <laughs> just at the top of the hill. You don't want to be, yeah, just, just relax. <laughs> all peak. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all peak, no trough. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do it? Can we do it? Yeah, I just, up and up and up, you yeah. know? Um, and so now... I try not to buy things that I'm not excited to read, like I'm reading comic books. And I find myself now, if I start reading something and I'm not super into it, I'll stop. And I, I want to, especially with the limited time that we have in this human incarnation, you know, it's as it seems, it's like there's, we can't read everything. We can't watch everything. We can't listen to everything. Like, so I want to be fuck yeah about the things, you know, this is, I didn't come up with yeah. that concept, but just like, man, there's some authors, some artists, some, like I've never regretted listening to Reggie Watts. I've never <laughs> regretted, like, uh, there's so many, like, pe people that I'm so, like, and there's some books that I'm like, oh, like, take a chance, have experiment. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to finish that one, or I'm not going to read another yeah. one of those, or I'm not going to read that one again, or whatever it is. And so this is all to say, I mean, especially now, if I get a stack uh, or, like, a, a, of new comics or new books or whatever, I'm going to read the one that I'm most excited about first, because, as the Buddhists say, like, next breath not guaranteed next lifetime guaranteed but next breath like we're, we're not ever guaranteed you know a tomorrow or a next year yeah so like you know enjoy the things that you enjoy like don't put them off dessert first and the, the todd barry joke do you know this joke he's like uh i forget it he's like uh i saw box box uh box set of a steely dan it's like the complete the complete works of steely dan i'm like I wonder who this is for. Yeah. It's like somebody who's like, you know, I haven't listened to anything by Steely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time that I've listened to everything. <laughs> by Steely Dan. Like, I don't know if that's his exact wording, but it's something like yeah, that. Yeah. And it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. It's yeah. so funny. He really found something. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll say this too. Uh, I, don't, I hope I'm not blowing up anyone's spot, but Zach Sherwin, my friend, the aforementioned, he, uh, he, he does comedy. He's not doing stand up these days. He's just focusing on this, uh, this show, the crossword show, but he has done stand up. He has done comedy rap and music and of other kinds. Um, and he, he only, he, so he is a student of rap. Like rap yeah. is like the waters that he's been swimming in since he was a child. And so like, I feel like there's some things that we will, if we love an art form or a genre, we will take in even like the the worst of it mm -hmm. because we love it so much. Like I will, I will watch 
you know, an open mic, you know, like yeah. I will not go out of my way, but I will watch, <laughs> you know, comedians that aren't my, the most my cup of tea, but, you know, just out of, you know, research and yeah. curiosity and experimentation and like jo joy really to be like, wow, what else? And also because what, what do I know? Maybe I will in like, I'm not just gonna, well, like, it's like those comics that you're willing to put down exactly. or the books that you're willing to stop reading. Yeah. Why not? You know, yeah. like my mom told me with uh, her last, her, her second husband who has since passed, uh, my she would like go they would she loves food and she loves trying new restaurants and he would always be like well what if we don't like it she's like then we won't go back you know yeah. like but she's like she wants to try it you know uh -huh. as opposed to like right now i'm actually i used to be like that more too but now i have this lasagna this vegan gluten-free lasagna by amy's that every time i i don't eat it every day but when i'm at home it's just a frozen lasagna and it tastes so good it makes you so and i'm happy. just i'm so i'm like yeah. working on a I'm maybe a whole one-man show about it but i'm like <laughs> I, every time to my girlfriend i'm like i love this lasagna and that's the concept in our lives like when things are lasagna the things that we're fuck yeah about she's like i just got off the phone with my friend alexis another banger you know yeah. just like every time that well, that friendship is lasagna yeah, our yeah, relationship yeah, yeah. is lasagna we just moved into a new place a few months ago and she loves it more than any place that we've lived and we're like this place is lasagna and so but now you i'm wouldn't like have known it unless you went for it the uh, first time absolutely and so kind of the joke that i'm working on is like a hundred percent like the lasagna is lasagna for me and it's the same every time maybe i'm a little different maybe it's a little different but it's the same thing and that's a way that i'm like i embrace the monogamous relationship that uh, i'm yeah. in it's like this relationship is lasagna and it's like because it's not even because she and i are both growing and learning and changing I'm like it'd be like what if this lasagna was the same delicious every time but also it read a book that i could talk to it about you know yeah. what i mean my girlfriend's a walking talking learning well, lasagna yeah. way that's better great. you know yeah. and her name's not even amy no it's reenie <laughs> Uh, <laughs> close a syllable to Brady lasagna yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this is this is all to say uh, I feel like I was in the middle of one more thing do you guys think I was what were we talking about uh, I do that was beautiful I think it is amazing how you tied that together oh thank you the idea of of having that thing that's so good oh that you're just like I love it and yeah. you've reminded me yeah so we have like first Stand up is like that for me and like stupid action movies are like that for me. Really? Like, you know, like I love, I love a, almost any Nicolas Cage movie, you know, R really. Oh, um, I'll, he is so fun to watch yeah. no matter what I've seen him in some things that I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to watch it again, but I'm never unhappy to be looking at Nicolas Cage yeah. doing something, yeah. you know, whether through his window, you know, or what have you. <laughs> um, and I remember I just slowed down cause I'm like, gotta remember to record that later. Um, that Nicolas Cage tidbit. But so like, I love a, a face off. I love the rock. I love con air. And like, that's a genre that I'll really go into deeply. It's really, it's going to be really interesting when I get to the end of why I'm saying all of this. I think these are, it's a fun journey to be on, but it'll be very specific. But, uh, so my friend Zach, he, Rap is like that for him. Like if yeah. new rap comes out, like he it might not he he might listen to it despite the fact that it might not end up being his favorite that he listens to all the time. But it's like he wants to keep up with the conversation. He wants to be conversant totally. in in rap. He's of, in the culture of the culture, and he is not that way. Even though that he does comedy, he's not that way with stand up. For him, like for like he'll recommend rap to me that he thinks I will love, and I love rap as well. I love like hip hop is amazing, but he will listen to more of it than I will. We actually. Yeah. I came up with a, an idea for a podcast that we wrote a theme song for, but we haven't made yet <laughs> called friends, friends and Wu-Tang, yeah. which is that I've watched every episode of friends. He's listened to every Wu-Tang episode. And so <laughs> our plan was to recommend like the best of all of them. That's and cool. like for every episode, be like, what episode of friends did you watch Zach? What song of Wu-Tang did you listen to Mike? And yeah. try to make connections between there's them. There's a, there's a guy in the scene that has, uh, can you name all of the members of Wu-Tang? It's RZA, Jizza, uh, it's uh, Ross, uh, oh, Chandler, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Phoebe. Uh, Phoebe's wow. always last. Is um, that that's somebody's joke? Yeah, oh, wow. it is kind of beautiful. That, do you know what the who that comedian is? Yeah, Noah. Noah Reynolds. Uh, uh, yes. I'm gonna tell Zach about that. That's that's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah, don't have to do our so podcast funny. now. It already exists as a joke. <laughs> um, yeah, man. He also did a, he did a song once where he compared. Mm. He told he it was called the Wu Tang Killer Beatles, and. <laughs> he he matched up which beetle each Wu Tang member is and, and oh. or vice versa. Pretty fun song. Yeah. Anyway, he only takes in likes to take in comedy like by, you know, masterful craftspeople of it. Like 
Gary Goleman, one of our favorites. We'll see, totally. see a Gary Goleman show any day of the week. And uh, recently, he heard Todd Barry. Zach listened to Todd Barry on Comedy Bang Bang, another fantastic like yeah. comedy. Back enterprise. to Reggie Watts, also yes, absolutely. the original comedy musical. Bang Bang, a comedy Bang, yeah. yeah. And he was the musical guy, one hundred percent. And then you know who, when he was on the show, who replaced him? Weird Al. Weird Al, of course. That's beautiful. as every young teenager has to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, he listened to Todd on Comedy Bang Bang and loved it. And he was like, you know, Todd's on here promoting his new special or album. I'm going to go watch and or listen to that. Yeah. And he came away with it and he's like, yeah, Todd, Todd knows what the fuck he is doing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, because he's like, you know, it's kind of, I'm putting words in his mouth now, but like, it's like don't waste my time, you know, like uh -huh. be what, well, and Todd is also uh, in the, you know, sort of the dichotomy we were talking about of like, are you sharing something that is meaningful in content or are you creating something that is beautiful in form or yeah. some, every comedian is doing some combination of both, but what are you doing? And like, you know, you can come away with it as like, this is who Todd is as a person, but it's not political. It's not even necessarily like storytelling. You don't learn about his childhood yeah. or like even what, you, what his friendships are like th necessarily. That's, that's uh, somebody I remember specifically said to me i never want to i want i don't want to get off stage and you know who my dad is ha huh. like i want to be able to just tell jokes i want the jokes to be what's funny yeah. i mean and what's really funny is that's so funny yeah. that if he said it on stage he would get laughs and there's whole new avenues open yeah like i mean and yeah. actually i think he could say that on stage it's a he he yeah. could say that on stage and have people it would make people wonder, what is his dad like? Yeah, yeah no, one hundred percent. Still, they wouldn't know, so he'd be safe. Yep. Yeah. That is, uh, that's so funny. I, uh, I, so I had, uh, it is, yeah, yeah. Like, because he's and also then he has, so more. Re he's that's revealing to you now. Exactly. Like, wow, what's your weird dad like, bro? Yeah, you know, yeah. why, why do you have to be so mysterious? Right. In, in fact, bringing it back to Seinfeld, I a thing I heard once. And I hope that this wasn't I'm like, was this told in confidence? Um, well, hope it wasn't uh, <laughs> that. Uh, let me let me think a little further. Yeah, no, I, th I think it's OK. Um, if we have to, I can cut it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think we'll be fine. But that I I don't. It's so interesting. Oh, there's so many like in in. Like, I love this. You are. There's so many recursive inception levels of what's going on right now in my mind. But, okay, so the thing is that Seinfeld made a, like a comedy special a couple years ago called Jerry Before Seinfeld, I think. And it was basically he went back through Was that a of, book? No, no, he, he did that too. Okay. That one's called Is This Anything? Okay. And then one time I took a picture of that book next to Gilda Radner's book called It's Always Something. And uh, <laughs> that was pretty fun. But uh, uh -huh. yeah, no, he made this special. It's on, I think it's on Netflix or it was called Jerry before Seinfeld, which was not just an hour of straight stand up, but it was like videos of old bits and like his old set lists and yeah. like going back through like old footage and, you know, interacting with it when from before he was, you know, the, what is it? The, the household name totally. Seinfeld. Yeah. Just Jerry, you know? Yeah. And Somebody, somebody told me that like there's a, a scene that's not in the movie, but they have footage of that. I forget what it was, but the, that the director was like, we should put this in. And Seinfeld was like, no, nah, I don't think we should. And the guy was like, yeah, I think it's, I mean, but like in the sort of debate about it, it's like, it's so revealing like of who you are. And Seinfeld's yeah. like, yeah, I don't do revealing. And <laughs> like, that's so funny. Yeah. And like that, I mean. That I, says so much. That mm -hmm. says so much. And he's like, he didn't even want to say that. And so that's the part where I'm like, oh, am I, am I doing a disservice to whoever told me that? Was that told to me in how many yeah. levels or layers of confidence? The point being like, maybe it was How told, revealing is it? it yeah. Right. And <laughs> it's, it is revealing, but in a way that if you are familiar with, with Seinfeld and his work yeah. and the way that he does things, it's not it's not really revealing at all. No. It's revealing something that was already inevitably possible it's to like be known. It's like an elegant way of putting out that he's private. Yeah. yeah. You know, that is so true. Yeah, he, he's so private, he doesn't even like people to know that he's private. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Wow. Um, I do got to say, so uh, we had uh, pr two hours on a battery on that camera and it died. I wow. <laughs> but okay. we do have, we have these at least going, but yeah. we should probably wrap her up. Yeah, that Definitely. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Dude, Mike, thank you so much for being yeah, on. This so was much. a blast. Thank yeah. you. It was so fun. Yeah. yeah, this was great. I, It's like, uh, like getting to, I imagine what it's like for like, how you were talking about when people in a certain realm can kind of talk to each other about certain stuff. Your comedy uh, brain is is fun to play with. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. It's it's wild how much is in there. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And you've inspired me to get a tape recorder. A hundred percent. And you've inspired me. I, I it almost went away, but I it came, it just came back. Do in it. In addition to Seinfeld <laughs> is so private, he doesn't want people to know that he's private. And uh, the other one, oh yeah, I I, mean, I enjoy watching Nicolas Cage no yeah. matter in, in anything, whether you know uh, a, a silly action movie or through his bedroom window, whatever it is, I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome, beautiful, hell yeah! Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Do, Do you, you want to plug your podcast? Yeah. Oh sure. I mean, put Mike Kaplan spelled the way I am. Uh, M Y Q K A P L A N. Put that in. I'd say like mainly, you know. Go to my website, go to my social media, find out where I'm performing, come see me live. Uh, if you can't do that, for sure, my albums, they're all you know on your various streaming Spotify's and what have you. Yeah. Uh, so search for Mike Kaplan, spelled my way on those. You'll get, I think there's at least six, al- six stand-up albums and then some music albums as well. Uh, the most recently recorded album that's available there is AKA, and that's the one I think I'm like happiest and proudest of that's yeah. you know the closest to who I am right now as it should be um and thank you and yeah I feel really good about it I'm excited to record another one this year that I'll hopefully feel the same way about yeah and uh but yeah I do I have a newsletter at mikekaplan.substack.com I send out jokes for free and also you can subscribe for more my oh, podcast yeah. with guests uh, is a uh, broccoli and ice cream and I have a Patreon for that in addition to the free ones. And then another free one that's called The Faucet. And uh, my new book I made with Ramin Nazer, who's an incredible artist. He in- illustrated a bunch of my jokes. The book is called Art Brain, Heart, Heart Brain Art Train. Huh. Uh, and it's at RaminNazer.com and MikeKaplan.com. And just, yeah, but put Mike Kaplan wherever you want to find things and you'll find him. Hell yeah. And thank you so much for being on, man. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate Hell yeah. That. We both appreciate it. Yeah. Do you want to plug any cloudy uh, guy? Howie's every Saturday, nine o'clock, and then April twenty sixth. Uh, I'm headlining a show at Mike Drop Mania in uh, Chandler, Arizona. So I'm excited for that. I'm Tight. On the 20- Did you say Chandler, Arizona? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's speaking like a, of friends, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hopefully, there's no hot tubs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, raising Arizona, my favorite Nicholas Cage. Yeah, yeah. look oh. at that. <laughs> look Circle. at that. Everyone can have my comedy brain. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Thank Hell you so much, Mike. Yeah, dude. Thank just you. thank you. And uh, just Slaughterhouse Studios. Yeah. You know, subscribe. Mm-hmm. We've got a ton of stuff on the show. Mm-hmm. Woo. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Goodbye.